Hello? Hello? <laughs> no, it was it was me. There was a system update. It, it reset my audio settings, as always. Hi. It was not. I saw you talking about uh, black hair. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I reset it for OBS, but I didn't with uh, with Discord. So it was actually on me. <laughs> uh, it's all good. Hi. All right. Hey, good to talk to you. Um, I realized that you actually had a message sent to me a while ago that I, I, I didn't respond to. Twice. It was, it was, oh, I only see one from around Christmas oh, time. I sent you two emails and one message forever ago. Yeah. All right, well, this one is about talking about Israel. Um, Indeed. Okay. Which is great because you just had a guy in your chest, uh, Amitai Aoni. He donated to you and he wanted you to talk about the Hawar genocide in Palestine that happened tonight. Um, 400 people were injured and one person died. Um, and I want to bring that up anyway, just because it's a very recent thing that happened. That sure. is a well, huge issue. I haven't read on it at all. So this would be a good it chance to happened. epically own me yeah. Yeah, on, the, on the topic. I've been, I've been doing chores all day. So yeah, give me, I mean, give me your name and pronouns so chat uh, knows what to do and then hit me up. I mean... Uh, my pronouns are she, her. My name is uh, Katie. Um, I stream a little bit. It's dad Katie, D-A-T-K-A-T-E-E -E, uh, on Twitch. And uh, yeah, I don't think chat would need my pronouns to say that I'm wrong because I'm debating you. So <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's um, kind of a superficial um, thing, but they still like to know. You know, they're polite like that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so... Even though I have been dying to talk to you about Israel for forever, that was not the topic that we agreed to talk about. So I will not, in fact, ethically own you this time on that. Um, <laughs> um, although I'd appreciate talking about it at some point if you'd be interested. Um, so we agreed to talk about the Say Her Name discourse. Yes. If you remember. I do remember that. Cool. Um, so would you like to, like, crystallize your position or do you want me to just go at it um yeah well my, my position is that it's really really dumb to ask people to like pivot on a hashtag they're using right after a tragedy because it happens to share a name with an existing hashtag that hasn't been used for a while and 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 when there's the same basic cause anyway i think that's like really dumb and unrealistic Okay, um, I see. So there are a few things that I want to get out of the way first, just to, to make sure that we don't get stuck on things that don't matter, I guess. Um, I wanted to ask, I see a lot of people when I discuss this and they go, this is just a hashtag, why does it matter? Are we both on board that the hashtag is just a representation of like a movement and it's not about like the actual point of arguing different hashtags on Twitter, or do you have a different stance on that? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there are people for whom it is literally just the hashtag, but I, I think most people are considering it broadly to be just like a movement association thing, you know? Like the actual, yeah. the, the actual letters aren't, I think, what most people were upset about. I think it was just kind of like the audacity of taking a term associated with black liberation and that struggle and then using it for something else. Yeah, I agree 100%. So I just wanted to make sure that we're both using it as a movement reference so it wouldn't be like, why are we arguing about hashtags anyway that don't matter? Because I had to argue with people about that nonsense. Um, okay, I just will make a very quick um, aside for me, and hopefully Chad would accept that. I consider myself um, a trans ally, and even though I disagree with Vosh's position on this, it is not like an anti-trans sentiment that I'm trying to convey. And if anyone feels that way, then I am apologizing. And that is not my intent at all. Um, so it was just important for me to say that. Oh, good intentions have never stopped uh, chatters from getting angry. So we'll see how they react. Um... <laughs> yeah, um, I was, uh, I'm being constantly informed that my intentions don't matter in this space anyway. So, so... Um, what are your intentions yeah. then? <laughs> um, so I'm going to be very honest. I, I still haven't decided if I'm trying to convince you that you're wrong or I'm trying to convince your chat that you're wrong. Well, you should probably right? focus with me. You'll have a pretty tough time convincing them if I don't seem that moved. 
Okay, but the issue with that would be that you don't have any material interest on conceding a point, even if I were in by a godly mistake, like correct, you know? Well, if you if you approach things from that angle, then you have to understand there's not much of a material interest in my chat to um to side against me unless you manage to like really get me on a point convincing enough that I would look a fool if I didn't concede it. Yeah. That that was pretty much like what I was trying to um decide how I want to try to play it basically. But my intention is obviously um, you've been criticizing a lot of like leftist infighting and like I see you as one as one of the two major figures that wield the most around amount of influence here. And um, personally, I've been following your content for like three years now. You're the reason why I got into um, like discord and online politics generally. Nice. Um, yeah, um, I really enjoy your humor, which is why I started following you to begin with. So not not the current humor the old humor the edgy humor not not this uh the, the i'm so cool humor that's less my vibe oh don't um, worry i made plenty of that humor back then too it was just a lot less funny so i think people read it not as a joke but rather as an actual indication of like narcissistic personality disorder so in oh, that shit. respect okay. i'd say that on average the humor has probably improved quite a bit <laughs> okay then maybe i just like uh declined in iq points and i'm not as funny anymore or something i don't know um that's fair um yeah fucking i lost my train of thought it doesn't matter so those are generally my intentions i guess oh i remember what i wanted to say yeah i just think that i have some critiques about like this specific issue regarding your conduct around it and your um talking about it and i also believe that it leads to like a greater point with some of your content but i'm fine discussing the specifics first about this and if we have time then we can go into the other stuff sure Hit me up. um okay so i guess the first thing that i really like to address is that both in the video that i sent you on the email and now you said um that uh the slogan is rhetorically appropriate um, so you basically um, are saying, like, this slogan applies to Brianna J. So there's no reason to, like, gatekeep it except for, like, um, black people being upset that it's, like, what they see as appropriation. Is that um, a fair um, rephrasing of what you said? I don't think there's a reason to gatekeep it at all. You have to have a really good reason to try to adjust rhetoric on a group level, especially during heightened times of sensitivity, like right after the death of a trans girl. Um, I can think of a couple of reasons my, why, my, why you might want to do this. So like, for example, um, if a slogan is kind of stochastically arrived at, like it just, like it just happens, you know, um, and then it turns out that slogan is actually through sheer coincidence kind of overlapping with an anti-Semitic slogan, you know? Um, I think it would be fair then to go like, all right, guys, we need to, okay, all right, take two, you know, let's roll this one back. I think that's okay. I don't think it's impossible to find situations where that's justified. But this, to me, comes nowhere even close to, to, to that standard, um, to, to that burden of obligation. Okay, so I think what I was trying, because I'm, I'm trying to, um, like, decouple certain components and, like, address them individually. So I was trying to address the point that I don't feel that the slogan is appropriate and therefore the usage thereof is um, misguided. But if you want to address the point first of, like, that you feel that some parts of the progressive movements are, like, trying to basically speech police, we can talk about that first. Well, they are. I mean, that that's pretty explicitly what was being done, right? The idea was that the hashtag was in some way taking away from black issues um, and, and therefore people should stop using it. Seems like a ex pretty explicit case of gatekeeping in this respect, whether you think it was justified or not. Okay, um, so I was told I shouldn't fight on gatekeeping. So I'll just say, yes, it's a type of gatekeeping, um, but I think it wasn't done in a way that I'd necessarily be on board with calling it speech policing in the terms of, yes, absolutely. Many people on Twitter, um, were very vocal and said, this slogan shouldn't be used on white people. And there was a lot of, um, I believe this is racialized for a reason, but yes, I agree. There was some aggression, 
but I also think that the general plight, especially considering um, like Jesse Gender's um, like tweet, um, wasn't necessarily as hostile as you present it or as you perceive it. Um, oh. And let me just very quickly ex explain what I mean. My my interpretation of what happened is that there was a good faith attempt to use the slogan. Um, and then some people in the progressive movement found that inappropriate or offensive or whatever the fuck. And then they turned to their allies and they're like, hey, guys, maybe not. And maybe they even yelled, hey, can you cut that shit out? Right. And then the way I see it, um, the other side was like, now we're cool. We're just going to keep doing this. You're being silly. Um, and now you can say what you want to say. Sorry. The level of aggression isn't really relevant to me. Um, the, the, the essential implication was that it is racially insensitive or racist to continue to use the term, you know, no matter how politely it's phrased, essentially it's saying, you know, change your language or, or you're a bigot slash contributing mm -hmm. to bigotry as if there's any difference in the minds of a lot of people on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, the, the level of actual explicit hostility in the message is, is kind of irrelevant to me. Um, you could have been really okay. nice about it, but at the end of the day, I think it's a toxic attitude to take. Well, I guess my counter argument to that would be that um, I would argue that if you have heard the if you have heard and understood the claims that were made by um, I don't want to call it black Twitter because there were both like black advocates and white advocates that were. So let's just say the um, not use the hashtag side or use a different hashtag side. Um, I do believe um when they make those claims and then the we want to keep using the hashtag side says um i'm hearing you but i'm not racist for using it i'd argue that that's kind of um unfortunately the reason why they choose to continue to do that can partially be attributed to um a general dismissal of black voices inside the progressive movement well, I think it's okay to dismiss voices if they have a bad point. I don't really care what the race of those voices are. If they okay. think it's because of their race that they're being ignored, they're free to make a point to that. But that's not really what I see. The point was pretty stupid up front. I don't think that people should be expected to engage in a kind of selective apologetics where if they encounter a bad position from a person of color, they have to engage in an additional level of scrutiny or or they have to be more protective with the rebuttal. I think it's fine to just so, disagree. Yeah, so I 100% agree with what you said, except that I think that um, the claim wasn't stupid and that's what I wanted to go over with you um, because I feel that the fact that you just found it stupid right off the bat, I, I don't think you should listen to someone's opinion just because they're black. I do think that there was maybe a lack of understanding of the points that I believe were good enough points to be considered. And potentially they were dismissed because of all types of biases. I'm not really interested in saying white people who keep using the hashtag are secretly racist. I don't care about that. I'm just here to indicate that the point wasn't as stupid as people claiming that it is. And that's kind of partially what I wanted to discuss. Go ahead. Okay, so you said that the slogan is rhetorically appropriate to the Brianna. Uh, is it Brianna J or Brianna J? I always get I, confused. I think it's J. Okay, then we'll say J, and and hopefully we're both right, because um, it, it would be really embarrassing to say the wrong name when the hashtag is say your name properly, right? Um, Okay, so you said that the slogan is rhetorically appropriate, and you've said that in the video and both in this conversation. And my basically main argument is that the slogan really does not apply to Brianna J. And um, like, I found it interesting that you've even very strongly implied that if people think it's not relevant is because they don't see her as a woman. <laughs> so it's like a transphobic sentiment. Um, I'm not going to be too aggressive on that, but I, I just found that to be a, a bit like silly, I guess. I'm oh, sorry if <laughs> that sounds weird. Well, I, I believe I made that claim with regards to Jesse Gender. My issue there was that um, Jesse Gender's claim was that the say her name hashtag wasn't really relevant to Brianna J's situation. 
which seems silly mm -hmm. to me because it it was you know born of Brianna Jay's misgendering. Um, the whole say her name thing uh, is is on one level it's like a, okay, well media pay attention to this death, and on another level here it's a reference to the the, the dead naming. Of course, I think yes. it was the Daily Wire that went on board and did for once some investigative journalism and they uncovered Brianna's dead name by like accessing dental records or something like they called around and found some old. So, you know, given those circumstances, it seems like the say her name hashtags, if nothing else, pretty snappy. I mean, even if it was a poor fit, um, I still don't think mm -hmm. you should just randomly change hashtags for no reason. But it seemed like a pretty, pretty decent fit here, really. Okay, so I guess uh, before I'll address why I think it's irrelevant, I think there's an issue that uh, wasn't properly addressed. So Brian J uh, was in the UK. So if we're saying that people in the UK weren't really aware um, of like the context of the Say Her Name movement in the United States, and that, um, and sorry, I got a message and threw me off. Don't message me, I'm talking to Vosh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I think in the context of like, if we just look at the UK, um, I don't necessarily disagree that the hashtag fits considering what happened with like, um, Brianna's, uh, dead naming, for example. Um, but I think since Twitter and the internet generally are very American centric, once Americans got into this discussion, and now we're having mostly people who are American discussing whether this is legitimate or not. This is outside the preview of like well-intending people who weren't aware of the context um, use the hashtag. Because now when I've informed people of this context and they choose to refuse to be like, you know, you even pointed out that, um, is it called a vigil? Um, for Brianna, and then they apologized for chanting "say her name" because they said they were brought awareness to the context of the thing, so they used something else. Yeah, right? that seemed awfully sad. Um, I disagree. I I think that's something that I see as um, a reconciliation and like bridge building to prevent infighting. Um, but that I will doesn't... get to the point of like mourning and stuff. But basically what I'm saying is that once we're inserting this as an American uh, context, and this is obviously American centric discourse, I don't think it's a legitimate thing to say, well, people in the UK, when they started using this, didn't um, mean it to be this way. Because now Americans who are who want to use the slogan are using it too, even though they were they are completely aware of the context now. So it's I, not just a good faith mistake anymore. I want to be clear. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think decisions like that prevent infighting. Acquiescing to outrageous demands from woke scolds increases the amount of infighting. The more leeway you give them, um, the uh, uh, the more harm they can do in the future because you've given them that kind of social power. And for two, I don't really care if people use it. There's no mistake involved here. There's nothing wrong with using the hashtag after all. Um, it, it's, there's, there's, mm -hmm. no, there's no cost benefit analysis here. I think it's quite harmful too, at a vigil, um, after everyone's gone home, you know, it's a very solemn moment. And then people are like, okay, well let's reflect on what's happened. And the discourse is then like, it was racially insensitive to use that term to mourn a dead teenager. It's like, again, you need to have a really goddamn good reason to engage in this kind of behavior, to prompt this kind of fake introspection. And I just don't think it was on display here. Okay. Well, again, you, you said that you said woke scolds um, like posing outrageous demands. And I want to address that because while I do believe that there are some woke scoldy elements to this, I don't think they're worth being dismissed when there is some validity to those claims. Then so I don't believe there? they're outrageous. Okay, so um, again, I've tried addressing this multiple times. I've been keep going on slightly different directions, which are all very important to this discussion. So I'm not complaining about that. I don't feel like in an American context, so maybe we can move past like the, it was appropriate in the UK for the dead naming. I don't feel like in an American context, using say your name is relevant. Um, so I don't believe it is rhetorically appropriate. Um, 
Even if it Would was irrelevant, like I still wouldn't think there was any harm in using it. I don't think it's irrelevant, mind you. But even if it was, and we had a whole discussion on its relevance, I don't think using an irrelevant hashtag is in itself harmful. Um, mm -hmm. You say, say her name. A person died. It was a her. So say her name, you know? Um, the terms that we arrive at, you know, they don't have to be like masterfully crafted allegories with 17 references to the specific case at hand. The term people use is the term people are going to use. Okay, so do you feel like instead, when, when people say Black Lives Matter, would it be okay if people then said all lives matter, but they actually mean Black Lives Matter? I don't really see what the comparison is between what I said and what you said here. Okay. The All well, Lives Matter movement was a direct rebuttal of the Black Lives Matter premise, implicitly the suggestion that Black Lives Matter less than white lives right now in American society today. The All Lives yes. Matter was a deliberate misinterpretation of that framing, the implication being that saying Black Lives Matter means only Black Lives Matter, when of course that was never the intended message to begin with. It's a bad faith engagement. Um. I agree. The point that I'm trying to make is I I'll explain why I think the slogan is not rhetorically appropriate and then you'll get where I'm coming from. So um, say your name in America specifically addresses um, um, the erasure and the, by erasure, we mean the fact that black uh, women who are being brutalized by police are not even being reported on in the news. So they're being erased. They're not even reported on. There's no awareness to that. Um, so there are two elements to this, basically. Uh, three elements. White, um, sorry, <laughs> black um, woman and brutalized by police. Um, Brianna is a woman, absolutely. White, and wasn't brutalized by police. So it feels like this slogan doesn't really apply in an American context. Only and that you, matters. Only if you presuppose mm -hmm. the pre-existing context. I don't really care what its pre-existing context was. Say her okay. name, it's a her. I mean, if, if it was a guy who was killed, I guess it would be kind of grammatically incorrect. Apart from so, that, whatever people settle on is fine with me. I wouldn't care okay. if they settled on... Um, you know, something completely out of hat. I do think there are reasons to use the say her name term. Like, I think there's some specific parallel there, but it doesn't really matter to me that much. I think you need a really good reason to try to cajole people off of an existing hashtag or slogan. Like a really, really good one. Can I try to make sure I understand your point and then inquire something about it? Yes. Um, so... <sighs> you say that the 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 um, original context doesn't matter so the fact that the original say her name movement stands for x y and z is irrelevant as long as i can use say her name in a way that expresses um my point right so context does not matter basically is that fair unless the context is somehow harmful like again if it was an anti-semitic slogan then obviously using it now for Brianna J would be, you know, I see. Right. So that's why it's not equivalent to the all lives matter, because you do think that's harmful. So it does not track the same way. Well, okay. if I see if for mm -hmm. if for some reason, like all lives matter had been settled upon rather than black lives matter as the pro equality slogan, I don't think I would have had any inherent issue with that. Right. Like you can imagine pretty easily. Um, you know, uh, a bunch of people chanting down the street, all lives matter. And it's like a, a anti-racist protest. It's, you know, the, the terms are interchangeable and largely meaningless, um, but mm -hmm. there is inertia to them. Okay. So I guess the issue that I take, and I think um, part of the harm is basically that, and I get that you don't care about context, but I think the context here um, is exactly um, the plight of this side of the progressive, like the side that I'm here to express. So you say context doesn't matter, but the context is that there is an erasure of um, African-American women being brutalized by police. And then um, if we make it, 
if we open it up to everyone, and by open it up again, I'm not putting anyone in jail for using the hashtag. I'm more upset at fellow allies who have heard me make this argument and say, I don't give a fuck. As you said, like, who cares? You know, I think you should care. And the reason why I think you should care is because if the context discusses a specific issue the, the, that the African American community faces, and then we potentially dilute it by saying, well, it's actually an issue that all communities have, then now we're no longer addressing the African American issue. Now it's a general issue. And I know that you made the claim that like, this is not intersectional. But even though I believe that intersectionality analysis is like important, you're also, you know, cause you're an intelligent, I've heard you say this dozens of times, like different marginalized groups require different solutions for potentially different problems. We can't resolve um, the oppression of all marginalized groups by, using the same methods for everyone. There are targeted things that need to happen, right? I don't disagree with that, but I don't think any mm -hmm. harm is being done to black advocacy for the use of this hashtag. Okay. I don't think there's any competition for resources or for attention here. The idea that there is competition between different marginalized groups, uh, I think has historically been a reactionary belief. It's like the Dave Chappelle argument, the idea that all the, you know, like, um, their trans people are canceling him for being black or whatever. No, they're not. That's not, that's not happening. Overwhelmingly, trans people are far more progressive than cis people as a demographic, of course. But for some reason, he was insistent that there was some kind of competition for resources. I think it's a psyop or something often believed by people with misguided principles. I don't actually think it's a real issue. Um, the trans advocacy and black advocacy hashtags, whether they overlap, intersect, or don't at all, I don't think they're fighting with each other. So I don't think there's any harm in those terms being used in that way. Okay. Um, so I understand that. First of all, I'm reading chat. So that's the always original a mistake. Hash <laughs> I agree. But like the original hashtag was say their name. And now the Native American community often uses um i wow i'm gonna butcher this but something with stolen sisters i'm really sorry i was told this by a native american advocate and i don't remember the specific thing um but i don't particularly i don't have an issue with um it being used for native americans first um if they had had an issue with that then i would potentially make similar arguments for that i think what i'm saying is that when you're expressing like a level of dismissal to, so I feel like my side is saying, hey, you're diluting this very specific cause that we're trying to advocate for. And it's not that we don't care about trans people, we do. We can care about trans people while also understanding that this is about a very specific context of black uh, women being brutalized by police. And when you're using this, you're you're shifting the focus because now the, the focus isn't about black women brutalized by police. It's about marginalized groups being murdered. And you, that is simply not what the slogan is for. You talk, and then when you you say, talk about a focus, but the focus you're talking about doesn't exist. There's no actual crowd of people who are looking at uh, the, the hashtag being used in the context of black women, and then their attention got shifted and somehow this, you know, diluted the discourse. That's, that's not a real thing that's happening. Um, okay. By they, diluted the discourse, I mean that we're now using say her name for Brianna, but, and Brianna's name is being said a lot and we're all talking about it, but like a few weeks ago, um, everyone says her name one as Zashi or Zaki. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. That was an American trans black woman who was murdered, um, not by police, by a, a coworker. And we don't know her name, right? That's the exact thing that the slogan is for. Don't you so think now it the slogan, been, don't you think it would have mm -hmm. been inappropriate to use the term then she wasn't killed by police. Wouldn't you be diluting its original meaning to talk about murders broadly when say her name was used rather as an attack on the racist institution of the police? I would argue that to claim that say her name 
doesn't have to do with the racial issue that black and that black Americans face is um, misguided. Sure, it does, <laughs> but it also has to do with the police, a factor absent in the killing of the person you just described. It seems to Perhaps. me like both of us want to dilute the term, but you arbitrarily believe your dilution is acceptable, whereas my dilution is somehow unacceptable. Well, maybe even if that's true, I find that to be a very interesting statement. Um, I I feel like I feel like this is kind of a gotcha, and I don't know if I should participate in that or not. It's but not if a we gotcha. Do... It's you would need okay. to, you would need to explain why your deviation is justified, but not mine. So I think it's okay to say say her name in basically any context that isn't mm -hmm. reactionary. And if reactionaries say it, I can't really stop them, can I? I don't mind how people use it. People are going to settle on whatever hashtags they want. You're mm -hmm. interested in the purity of the term, not something I go by. But if you are, fine. But you would then have to explain how your impure decision to include the woman you just referred to is acceptable when previously your argument has been about preserving original. Would intention. you like me to go for it? OK, so I believe that if we uh, broke down the three categories for, like, say her name, although I feel like I should probably if I want to be more optically effective, I should probably fight the framing that I'm looking for the purity of the term. But I'll go with this. Um, if there are three elements to um, the use of, say, her name, um, black woman and police, and we rank them, I assume that, like, black is a pretty important component, woman is a pretty important component, and yes, police. But if I had to rank them, I'd rank them in that order. Um, so You think the when, police element is less important than her having been a woman? Well, I think that, say, her name was used in African-American communities, um, also for just black women who were murdered generally, although it's mostly used for police brutality. It was overwhelmingly used for police brutality. I mean, I the, loudest, the loudest use of the term was with the death of, um, my goodness, I'm blanking right now. She was shot. Uh, she was in the hallway. She'd risen from her sleep. The police fired openly into her apartment building. Breonna Taylor, yes, of course, my mind blanked was used most prominently for her. Um, but this was all part of an anti-police protest. After all, Black Lives Matter was about fundamentally police behavior. So it seems to me then that you could actually say that, say her name and any associated, you know, terminology is really more about police behavior. And you could say it if, say, an autistic white woman was shot to death for no reason by a police officer, right? I mean, if we're focusing well, on what matters most, it seems like the police element here is pretty critical. Oh, well, I would say that's wrong because Say Her Name has been often used before the BLM protests and before Breonna Taylor for other black women as well. And as your chat pointed out, since Native Americans have been using this for um, since at least 10 years to argue that this is somehow new to like BLM or like the, the recent uh, uptick in interest to uh, African-American issues and violence. I don't think that the police brutality is the strongest element, although I'd argue all three are pretty important, but say your name have been used, not predominantly, but partially just for black women who were murdered and were not properly reported on. Do you not think you're erasing the indigenous people a little bit? Because what they were talking about with those protests wasn't the police. It was about the abduction of indigenous women from the reservations. Yes. Um, whoa, why am I getting pings right now? This is very bad. Sorry about that. Um, I don't feel like I'm erasing Native American women, um, although they might feel that way and I'd like to hear the arguments. As far as I understand the use of it in Native American communities, um, it, it was welcomed that black women can use it as well. And generally so? speaking, what? So? What do you mean so? Well. It doesn't really change the argument of dilution, doesn't it? By that argument, you might just say indigenous people are more chill and some black people on Twitter are less chill. You could be arbitrarily selecting some voices to listen to and some not to. There are probably plenty of indigenous people who would have engaged in behavior I disagreed with. Some of them might have said, no, black women shouldn't be using this terminology. And I would have disagreed with them, too. My position here is consistent, well, mm -hmm. but it's not really dependent on the perspective of the indigenous or black people involved, because 
I don't really care what they have to say or think. I only care about the empirical harm done by the use of these terms, and I just don't think any's being done. I do, however, think that, with respect, this henpecking is actually damaging. This idea that in order for a slogan to be used, and by the way, slogans aren't really chosen by orgs. They're arrived at kind of, you know, broadly through uh, mm -hmm. processes we don't have direct control over. The idea that we need to engage in a kind of point-by-point -point breakdown of perceivable acceptability based on on what? The, the, the concerns of people on Twitter? Twitter, get, they get mad at everything. You know, like you could you could spend all night trying to come up with something that wouldn't offend anybody and you'd still fail. Somebody out there will have that some is kind true. of concern. Um, my point, however, is that with respect, the reason why we're doing this breakdown is because you had an automatic reaction of immediately dismissing these concerns. So I'm trying to make an argument that these concerns are more valid than you make them up to me because some people have criticized you. And I think rightly so that when I think when you hear you should listen to black people, you think people are telling you when black people say something, it's correct. Um, that is what they're telling and, me. OK, well. I'm not going to argue about it, what other people tell you, I guess. No, I just there's, don't there's no reason to say it otherwise. I'm a public figure. I've listened to the voices of tens or even hundreds of thousands of people. Many mm -hmm. people in my community are black. The argument that I disagree with somebody because I haven't listened to black voices is objectively wrong every time. I've always listened to black voices, but there are always black voices I haven't listened to. Some agree and disagree with me. The implication always seems to be that had I listened to the right black voices, I would be proven wrong. They also say listen. Then I think that's it, misguided. What does it mean to listen I, as well? Because I, 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 you know, I, my frustration with this, I just want to voice this. You listen to a black voice, fine. What if you disagree after? They don't really have a follow through for that, right? People who say listen to black voices do not then say, ah, and if you disagree with them, then that's fine. The implication is- I have is, a follow through. You can listen to me now. And go for it. Because I'm not those people. Um, yeah. I think that, again, as I said, I don't have an issue if people um, listen to that part of the progressive movement who says, hey, maybe this hashtag is inappropriate to use. Um, and then you say, well, I hear your point, but I don't think there's utility to it. But I'd argue that as a very prominent public figure who like runs this discourse, um, runs a big part of this discourse, to say this point is stupid and black people are being um, overly sensitive oh. is probably not the best progressive take I've ever heard. To be and clear. it's not about like coddling black feelings. It's about, again, your counter argument to me is simply that you're taking a utilitarian perspective that you're not seeing the harm. To and be, I'm saying to be that, clear really quick, I haven't said that black mm -hmm. people are whiny. Usually the loudest voices when stuff like this happens are white allies interjecting themselves. Um, there are whiny black and white people and all kinds of people. I don't think this has anything to do with black people being whinier. I just think this discourse okay. is being wrecked by whiny people. Um, okay, I then I apologize. I looked at a lot of Twitter and prep for this and I, I found, um, cause I've heard your claim that like white people are just taking up this cause and this isn't even about black voices, um, which I found interesting considering you don't care where it comes from. Um, but just the broader point that I'm trying to make and the actual critique that I'm making um, relays more to the conduct of the side that like, if you're an, I, I get that for you, this is an unreasonable demand um, and this entire discourse is being hijacked by woke scolds who have unreasonable uh, claims. So like engaging with it is just giving them power um, or whatever. And I get that perspective, but I also think that you care about progressive values and you care about unity. And a lot of your content, especially right now, focuses around infighting. And I just think there was a better way of handling this than going, everyone who cares about this on Twitter is whiny. Um, and like white people are just trying to raise a, a, the black people flag right now. And Jesse, Jesse Gender is spineless because she asked people to use a different hashtag. Do you disagree that that might have not been the best way to like help unity? No, I think it's fine. The fact of the matter is, the coherence and kindness of my arguments have very little to do with whether people like that will listen to me. 
I've been very unsuccessful in my four years of doing this, of getting those types of people to listen to reason based on the, I don't know, kindness of my argument. Because their counter-argument is always, well, the real kind person would just agree with me anyway. In fact, it's usually kind of like um, a condescending attitude towards the idea of caring about being right in some of these communities, you know? Like, oh, do your argument, sure, but like, ah, uh, don't, isn't it so tiring, all these white men having to argue whether or not this or that is true or right or reasonable? Which, mm -hmm. obviously, is just progressive anti-intellectualism. It's really dumb. But it's also mm -hmm. a really common attitude. I get sometimes people are tedious when they try to logic out everything, and there are ways to do that while being tedious. Um, but in my experience, I think it's generally best to be just kind of latently hostile towards those attitudes. Especially since the opening from it was, like, so obviously um, worthless to begin with. The original Twitter post that went viral was from a person with, you probably saw this, negative attitudes towards mixed race people. Um, yeah. You know, that which, and, and, and it's perfectly reflective of it. You take a look at that person's profile and they don't seem like much of a progressive. They care about black issues, but sure, so did Dave Chappelle. Caring about black issues on its own isn't a mark of a progressive, it's a mark of a person who cares about black issues, but you can still be holistically reactionary. And I thought from what I saw from her was a kind of, um, weaponization of progressive vitriol, you know? Ah, I am a black person with good faith opinions on this transgender issue. Now let me speak up on this. And I don't really care for it. And I think people who fall for that kind of stuff are naive or spineless. Jesse Gender's thread was just quivering. It was disgusting. Um, it's not just this like, you know, you, oh, you I've listened to the arguments. You can't consent to my point that you're not sowing unity and then call it disgusting. I unity mean, is, it wasn't disgusting. Unity is unifying against these ideas. These are anti-unity ideas. I wouldn't the unify idea, with people who... The ideas that Jesse uh, put forth might have been ideas you disagreed with. They were not disgusting. They might have been... Um, poorly phrased although i think she generally did a good job but i understand why saying stealing was bothering to you or like co-opting but to call that disgusting again that's a lot yet, of loaded language for someone who says they're an i think you're an ally i just like i i, I guess i have loaded I, it i am disgusted by it i think it's a very negative attitude to take i think it's very destructive towards our long-term goals and unfortunately, I think there's a lot of social clout to be had in behaving that way. Because in the left, if you are the kind of white person who will cloak every bad position they have in the, I've listened to black people, you know, I've listened to X voices, I've listened to Y voices, there's a lot, you can, you can get away with a lot if you go for things that way. That's the difficulty of the, I don't know, the path I walk, right? It's that no matter how dog shit my takes are, I never pretend that I'm just like, you know, neutrally representing some other marginalized community. I stand by everything that I say, whether or not I end up being right in the long term, you know, is, I, you know, even if you disagree with the stuff I say, um, see, this I, is what's I do stand for to me because I, I heard destiny make the exact same argument about you. Um, that I make all it my just points sucks. That, I, no, that I'm authentic. That... <laughs> yeah. That doesn't sound yeah. like him, but that was the point I was making. <laughs> yes. Um, he's the only, he and you are the only authentic ones and all the other people are just doing it for clout. When you can just be honest and say, obviously there are clo clo clout point points for you to win here too. Well, and that's completely fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that claiming someone like Jesse Gender did that thing um, for clout points more than maybe, maybe if even she was wrong and I'm wrong to claim that like, and Ella is doing this just for like virtue signaling. When I think if you look honestly at Jesse, and I, I get that there's like some personal friendship drama with Keffels and stuff, but like to claim that Jesse gender is just in it for the clout, so, I think that's incredibly well, unfair don't, and divisive. Don't, don't misunderstand me. First of all, the claim with Destiny is ridiculous. He cares about clout more than anything. Clout with a psychotic demon god in his mind that drives him to um, do everything lefties tell him not to do. Um, but secondly, with regards to Jesse Gender, I'm not saying that she's some kind of like malevolent, like arbiter of dishonesty who's doing all of this as part of some kind of calculation to maximize the, no, this is just really common in left spaces. People on the left, especially white people are socially <laughs> incentivized to kowtow and bow down to what is perceived to be the progressive position. Now, 
the progressive position in many cases is often just reframed as listen to black voices, listen to trans voices. Mind you, this is not, um, this is not the same as whiteies on the left have to count down to black and brown people, because it's not. Oftentimes, I think that the voices of black and brown people are kind of weaponized. Like, um, like white people will say, oh, you know, I'm just repping black or brown voices. But in reality, they're just saying what they want to say. And they're just kind of couching it behind that. Um, this happens pretty often, you know? I, I can't tell you how many arguments I've seen or gotten into where it's like, ah, well, I'm just listening to X or Y voices, you know? And then, like, a person from my community will show up and they'll be black, brown, Jewish, a woman, trans. And they'll argue my position. And suddenly, you know, it's, it's anathema to them. It doesn't matter that they're a black, brown, Jewish, whatever voice. Um, now they're just wrong because they're wrong. So suddenly we only yes. care about raw empirics when we're arguing against another person of color or whatever else. So I'd like to ask you something just to pick your brain about it. And I'd also like to say something slightly combative. So mm -hmm. which one do you want to do first? <laughs> uh, go with the combative. Okay, um, let me think about how exactly I want to phrase it because we kind of move past that with the Jesse stuff. Um, yeah, I think, again, um, to reiterate, my critique is more about conduct. So I feel that you have a tendency, um, maybe because you think there are bigger fish to fry, and I'm not necessarily saying that that's wrong. My critique of you is that you tend to um, look past or um, look more um, in an ex not excusable way, but you do put lesser harm on um, implicit racism or like stuff that are more, I think we can both agree that if we live under a, a white supremacist structure, we've all have some internalized uh, white supremacist beliefs. Do you think that's wrong? I, I think we're all affected by it. I think you can do a lot of work Good. to undo that, but for sure, I think it's, I agree. it's something that at the very least influences us. So at the core level, I believe that my critique of you is that as an ally and as someone that I do see as a fellow progressive, um, I should be able to ask you to do more work on that when I feel like that work is not being properly done. Like, I don't think if I tell another progressive, hey, this is a weird take, maybe check your privilege, they can still say, no, you're wrong. Um, but I would like them to first like assess that. And I'm not saying wow. that you have to then I'm not saying that you have to then go, oh, well, you're right. I was being white supremacist all along. Like, you can agree with things. I just think that the level of, like, aggro and, like, um, dismissal is indicative of the exact issue that I'm talking about. Well, doesn't that do you seem understand kind of where like, I'm getting at? I do, but it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy then. Because I can just say, oh, I've done the work. I've checked my privilege. I've assessed my positions, and I still disagree. And then you would say, ah, well, okay, but the way in which you disagree still indicates to me that you haven't done those things. Um, so, like, we're back at square one. It's, it's ultimately... But we wouldn't be in square one if, if you had... When you react in a way that is dismissive, I can argue that you potentially have not done all the work, because I'd say if you're a leftist, um, progressive, a big platform YouTube person, and your reaction to... Uh, the critique is, so what if Say Her Name is about a white girl now? Um, that's not a very good reply to the arguments levied against you. Well, and that's it, a choice that you make. To, that you make. It's a great reply if no arguments have yet been levied. Because that is but the important question. But that's not true. Well, well, hold on. I haven't run from anything that you've said. I've addressed the positions mm -hmm. that you've had. You may disagree with my conclusions, and that's your right. But I do take mm -hmm. issue with the implication that the reason we disagree is because I haven't even bothered to engage with them. I have. Mm -hmm. I engage with lots of disagreements. I have to. It's kind of my job. Um, but I don't know what to do when people are like, okay, well, I'm not saying you have to agree with me, but... And then they basically just say that I have to agree with them. I don't really know where to go from there. I mean, what could, what could I do to convince you that I've done the work, I've given a thought, I've, 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 I've checked my privilege, and yet I disagree? I still believe well, that no proper argument has been given to the point that it is harmless to you say her name okay. for Brianna J. So to try to build this bridge, I feel the fact that you continue. So again, 
I'm not saying that you have to agree with me. But when you say no valid argument was made, and this is just about work scolds having unreasonable demands, I don't feel like you even understand my argument, you know, because I do think that ignoring the fact that in an American context, say your name is absolutely a racialized movement that is addressing a racial disparity issue, to then claim that this should now be There's no issue at all with it being brought into just like non-racialized issue. And for you to call that nonsensical or invalid just seems like exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, because that's still not an argument. I need to be told that it's It is an argument. You just disagree that it's valuable. No, no, no. It's not an argument. You're saying that it is being used in a context which isn't about black people. Fine. So what then is the harm? You did say that it was um, dragging attention away from black issues, but I disagree. I don't. I, I think that historically this has been like a made-up point. The idea that um, progressive groups or marginalized groups are competing for attention, and you're you're sort of like wresting attention away from one point to another. I, I don't believe in that. Um, something pretty extraordinary would have to happen for me to fall to those arguments. Um, okay. So given that, if I don't think there's any harm in using it on a non-black person, being reminded that it's being used on a non-black person means nothing to me. I already know that. I've accounted for it. Okay. So let me do um, the picking your mind thing, and maybe your answers would give me uh, context, and then I'll be able to say, I completely misjudged you, Vosh. You totally checked your privilege, and I'm totally wrong about everything. Okay. Um, So I have two hypotheticals. Um, let's take the Brianna Day uh, case. Um, would you then have no issue if somebody said, like, um, me too, about Brianna Jay? It seems like it would be kind of nonsensical. I don't know what the rhetorical through line would be. But there are, circum- there are circumstances where I could see that being fine. Um, I'm trying to think, like, rhetorically, where would that make sense? Um, it, it, I, yeah, if, if, if it would fit in, then I would be fine with it. Because Me Too on its own doesn't sound like it means much in that context, but then you could think like, okay, well, maybe by Me Too, it's like I too as a trans person have been subjected to violence. Like, you know, yeah. the whole discourse is like, okay, um, Brianna was, was being bullied by her peers and attacked and was murdered by, you know, young people. And it's like, okay, well, I too as a trans woman have faced violence. Me too, me too. And if that happens, you know, um, I wouldn't like, encourage people to stop using it in that way so to then relate that to my point since brianna's name um she was talked about on the news like i know this is meaningless but i'll just say this because i find it interesting i've heard about the brianna j case because it was then on the news in israel and they said that a, a trans um 15 year old was murdered uh in the uk um so if if um, if say her name is about um, black women erasure and unreported cases with a focus on police brutality, then a lot of people feel like saying say her name about the case of Brianna is nonsensical. The same way that Me Too might be nonsensical. Uh, I don't think you could ever really argue that say her name is that nonsensical when you're talking about a murdered person. You know, because that because that feels like kind of universally applicable. It's like she died, say her name. We have a cultural, you know, we have, we have like a culturally accepted practice of kind of acknowledgement of the victim that I think you could apply in basically all cases, leaving aside the whole, like her having been dead named um, in the press thing, which obviously adds like a little bit more weight uh, to the the perceived validity of the, um, of the hashtag. Okay. Though even if even um, if people arrived at like a nonsensical hashtag, I still wouldn't wouldn't really care. I cer- I certainly wouldn't like go up to people who are using a hashtag that didn't make much sense and been like, ah, uh, well, you're kind of bigoted, and not listening to marginalized voices if you use this, um, because I I don't think any good is going to come of that. You can't really change the hashtag that people settle on. Uh, it it's just sort of like um a general organic movement to again, settle on a and- term. But again, I'm not here to discuss about the changing of the hashtag. I'm specifically discussing your reaction to that request, right? Like, 
I I don't have Twitter. <laughs> it's like I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and say I care about hashtags. Um, well, then just I'll just to... just just to be clear, if somebody's criticism of a hashtag was this is incoherent, I would mind it a lot less than somebody saying it's racially insensitive to do this. Because saying a hashtag is incoherent doesn't really produce the same kind of ridiculous myopic infighting that arguing that you're not listening to black voices by using that hashtag does. I mean, look at all the discourse that's okay. produced, right? Like, it, it wasn't just like an incidental request. It turned into like this big thing. Okay, but then like, and I'm sorry, th this might feel bad faith, but I genuinely feel like this is a good point I have to make. Like, if people would have said it's incoherent, you would just make the argument that you're currently making that like it's inappropriate to come when people are just trying to mourn for this this young trans girl being um murdered and like saying uh, and are still arguing about the the thing like i, I still think it would have been pretty stupid um and, and pointless but i don't think it would have been harmful in the same way i think it's harmful to do this like um to racialize something that was always racialized? Not to racialize it, but to indicate that people using the existing hashtag that had already been settled on were doing so in a way that was harmful to black people. Um, that, I think, is so harmful. So I don't think, I, I agree that that is inaccurate, but I think once they were explained why it is offensive, and then they say, I offensive. don't care, I do think that's harmful. But it's not offensive, though. Okay. So... <sighs> Um, I'm not trying to dodge your point. Can I, can, do you want me to respond to that or can I do my second hypothetical? You can do I'm your sorry, second hypothetical. Just, okay, I'm just not sure how to, I don't want to repeat myself too much, right? Um, okay, my second hypothetical was how would you feel about black people trying to advocate for reparations by using the hashtag uh, land back? Um, I think it'd be kind of funny. Um, I don't, I don't think I would, I don't think I would necessarily mind it. I mean, the worst you could really say is that it would end up being maybe confusing in the long run, but, um, I don't think it would be like harmful. I, th so here, here are two arguments that you could make. And one, I think I wouldn't be that mad at. And one that I would be mad at if somebody mm -hmm. said, wow, using land back here is like completely incoherent. Um, you know, like, because we already have like a settled movement on this term, you know, we could settle for another one, maybe one that makes a little bit more sense or ties a little bit more historical way to it. I think I'd be okay with that argument. You know, it's like, okay, I, will that change anything? Probably not. But I think I wouldn't mind people saying it. But if somebody was to say like, it is, it is bigoted against indigenous people to use the term land back to describe that, that I would take the same degree of vitriol against, I think. But, okay, but if you're going to say that, then how can you counter my point that the way that you choose to address this issue is unhelpful to leftist infighting, and you're saying, I don't have to speak nicely, I'm just making good points? Well, I don't have to speak nicely to anyone, of course. I mean, no one has to do anything. Can we not do that? That's not really... <laughs> well, it is, well, it is definitionally tone policing, right? But if we're to talk about, like, the effectiveness of the tone, which I think is a fine thing to bring up... Um, mm -hmm. I think that the kind of person who would levy the accusation that saying, say her name about Brianna J is like racially insensitive are the kinds of people that we should be mean to. I think that it's both rhetorically effective and useful to, um, to be a little bit more militant against those people because they are like the most damaging thing in our movement by far, like by a huge margin, I think when it comes to, um, unifying and getting stuff done. Okay, so the small distinction I was make is that obviously claiming that from the beginning that it is like racially insensitive um, is not um, good. I'd argue that um, if I have and I have repeatedly like explained that say your name is specifically like about advocating for a very specific issue that targets a very specific community within the black community and somebody says, yeah, that's not a legitimate argument for me for why I can't use this for a different thing. Um, sure, I wouldn't say that's racist. I just would say that that's not the best ally I'd want to have, but it's the ally I got, I guess. Well, a good um, argument would have to be made. I'm not really concerned with being the best <laughs> ally. I just want I'm to sorry, be... I'm sorry, I'm laughing. I want to be an effective advocate for the things that I believe in. If people 
say that makes me an ally, then that's fine. I won't argue with them. Um, but I, I don't, I mean, well, I just don't really. I believe, because you said that, like, if somebody said that using land back for reparations is incoherent, you'd think that's a valid argument. And I've repeatedly in this discussion explained why using this hashtag for Brianna J is incoherent. But you keep saying, I haven't made a good argument. So it I, doesn't make sense. I don't think it's incoherent in the same way. Um, because land, like, to be clear, say her name isn't actually a movement. It's just a hashtag associated with a broader movement. The say, like, there is no say her name movement. What we're talking about is the Black Lives Matter movement, mostly. Say her name. No, is just... don't do this. Wait, I can't, the well, first wait, wait, wait. thing I clarified on this talk was that we're not going to do. Oh, this is just a hashtag. Well, thing. yeah, but at this point now, it becomes relevant because land back isn't <sighs> just a hashtag. It's the literal term of the political movement. Whereas, um, like, the, the equivalent would be if people started saying hashtag Black Lives Matter because Brianna J died, which would be incoherent for a number of reasons. I'm not saying that the, the like, I, I agree that the say her name hashtag is associated with BLM, but I do still think there's a critical distinction if we're talking about, like, the difference between merely being associated with it and being the literal same term. But if your only argument is like, I think there's a degree of incoherence to using it with Brianna J, then I would say um, maybe maybe a bit for people who get confused by it. I didn't, and I'm pretty involved in political stuff. It didn't feel like it was an overstep or conflation to me. I don't think any harm was done. Um, and I still don't think it was justified to accuse people who use the term of being racially insensitive. Um, but if the only criticism is like, you know, it's it's a little bit confusing to have a overlap here. I wouldn't have reacted the way that I did. I wouldn't have called anyone hysterical. No, no, it's not it's not a little bit confusing. It's about um well, now I can't even say taking a movement because now you walked it back and said that it's not really a movement. Well, it, um, well, you I, do, don't, you, I don't really know how to engage with that now. Well, you do um, know that it's not the say her name movement. That's not what it's called. Say your name is there for to advocate for the against the la the the erasure of black women. That's what it's been used for historically. I'm okay with it being used in a variety of contexts. Disambiguation, you know. I understand, but okay, we don't have to call it a movement, but it's a hashtag that is meant to um, apply a certain critique, like BLM. Well, the B the BLM movement is meant to apply a certain critique. The hashtag was used in that context, yes, but it's been used in other contexts before and will again in the future. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We can't, we, you know, we don't want to run out of slogans, right? Like, keep in mind that trans liberation now is just a remodeling of black liberation now. Um, fight the power or like um, the raised fist as a sign of solidarity originated in the black... Um, in the uh, the black liberation movement but it's used ubiquitously for a bunch of progressive causes these days there's always going to be so, a lot so of overlap. what is say her name to you if it's not just a hashtag but it's also like not a movement how should i call it and what significance does it have if we're now saying that it's not like a movement advocating for certain things well it's it's a hashtag that has a lot of like historical context with relation to a movement for sure um it's obviously not a movement in and of itself. Nobody refers to it that way. And I'm not making the argument that it's just a hashtag in the sense that it has like no pre-existing context. It obviously does. But I don't think that context is unchangeable, obviously, because the context of slogans changes all the time. No justice, no peace was a civil rights protest that's been used in a bunch of different contexts. Um, you know, uh, it, it, honestly, a lot of stuff comes directly from black liberation in this country because that's always been the most active and militant body of progressive organization um, in the past century of American history. But if, okay. if we don't use that, I mean, uh, like... Vosh? Uh-huh. I, um, this was sound super weird. I love you, but I will do this gotcha now. Mm -hmm. I am so sorry. I Wait, have opened be Wikipedia. Be careful. <laughs> it had better be a good one. I'm going to try my best. <laughs> um, I know that you're a fan of Wikipedia. And I opened Wikipedia and say her name is a social movement that seeks to raise awareness for black women victims of police brutality and anti-black -black violence in the United States. Hmm. All right. 
cool. <laughs> Was it a good one? <laughs> Just out of curiosity, is there a disambiguation link at the top of that? What's a disambiguation link? On Wikipedia, they'll put that at the top of articles where the term could refer to multiple things. The correct title of this article is say her. Do you want me to just um, send you the link? No, I can Google it. Just a moment. Okay. Say her name is social movement seeks to raise awareness for originally created by the Black or the African American Policy Forum, according to research, seventeen percent more likely. So, da, 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 da. Um, an effort to create large social media presence alongside existing racial justice campaigns such as hashtag Black Lives Matter and Black Girls Matter. Never heard Black Girls Matter, but all right. Um, the, Amer the African American Policy Forum coined the hashtag Say Her Name in December 2014. Okay. I've never really heard it being referred to as a movement before, but I can fully accept that. Good. So, okay. So we can move on from that because it's, it's, I think it, it matters. So if we're, if we're now conceding that say your name is a hashtag, but it also represents a movement, um, then obviously using a hashtag that is meant to advocate for certain, um, things that a movement is pushing for, um, for other causes, while it's not illegal or anything like that, obviously, you know, I already made this point. I don't want to repeat myself. Well, I, so I agree I that it's not illegal, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree about that, too. Um, again, my main critique is just that um, if I then explain to you, hey, this is movement that advocate for certain things, and you're saying, well, I want to use this for something else, you're allowed to. I just don't know how that's um, helpful. Well, I mean, but I guess it's not about being helpful to the Say Her Name movement. It's about being helpful to Brianna J. I just don't think, and nobody, you've said it yourself, those things don't conflict with each other. I don't think they we do. We can do both. And what's yeah, more, I agree. Nobody, um, nobody, uh, like chooses this. It just it happens organically. So if, if the central criticism here is the idea that it is slightly confusing to use the term say her name when it has other associations, I think that's um, fine. I don't think it justifies uh, any of it's the stuff not, that my discourse was on. Okay. It's not slightly confusing. The movement has racialized elements for racial advocacy. And when you say that you can use something that is related to when you say i don't think it's a valid argument that this should apply for the specific advocacy of the movement and you're gonna say that's not valid it seems nonsensical uh yeah that's of because course it's a valid argument that's because it's in the context of whether or not it's appropriate to accuse people of racial insensitivity for using the hashtag or try to force them onto another one in the context of just making the argument that there's a degree of confusion or incoherence for the sake of making that argument, do you think I would have reacted that way on Twitter if I had seen that? Like if somebody had said, ah, well, you know, it is a bit confusing that they share a name, you know, like there was already kind of a meaning to that name. Do, do you think I would have like gotten really mad at them? I think that would have been fine to say. The issue that I had was the behavior, the trying to force people onto new hashtags, the idea that it was racially insensitive in some way. Okay, but I feel like saying trying to force is very loaded. When if Jesse J if Jesse Gender says, "Hey, let's use a different hashtag," do you think that's forcing? Um, y when you're saying that people are being racist if they don't, yes, like obviously. But Jesse Gender literally... didn't say that they're racist, did she? Um, Jesse Gender said a lot of regrettable stuff in that tweet thread. If you want to go through it, but absolutely, the idea I'd love was. To go through it. The idea was, yes, it is racially insensitive and you're not listening to black voices, et cetera, et cetera, if you do this. Racially insensitive and racist are not the same, the same things. And I know you know that because you argue for that all the time. Um, whether or not I know that doesn't mean they know that. I'm aware of Who that. is they? Because my, again, my critique is not conservatives are looking at us. I'm critiquing other progressive leftists. Progressive leftists should not be thinking that they are being called racist when somebody says, hey, maybe you're being racially insensitive right now. 
I don't think that's a hot take. That is what is being said by this portion of Twitter. There is no distinction in the mind of the woke school between racial insensitivity, uh, not having checked your privilege, and being racist. These distinctions exist outside of the analysis. Do you really analysis. believe that? Yes, of course I do. Do you think I'm a woke scold? I don't know. I haven't talked to you for long enough. You seem more sympathetic to their arguments than me, but that doesn't make you one. Okay. So do you think I see no distinction? So I don't see, I see a distinction. You see a distinction. Your audience sees a distinction. But when you and your audience come and say, hey, you're calling people racist, why not use your power and leadership to say, obviously saying this is racially insensitive, even though I don't agree with it, doesn't mean that anyone is calling you racist. I mean, I saw the discourse with tons and tons of people saying it was racist to use it. So, I, I, I mean, I, I did see that happen. I, I know for a fact that was happening. And that distinction between racial insensitivity and racism is often lost. Not even just a product of woke scolds and their biases, but I think just the nature of Twitter um, tends to boil down these arguments. It's kind of inevitable. I agree. I agree. But then in that case, don't you feel like... Because I feel like the exact same... I, I can see like a liberal or even a conservative making the argument of like when i'm just saying my opinion about trans people you're calling me a transphobe and basically your response is hey don't don't say stuff to them that makes them think that they're transphobes because they don't get the distinction this, i feel like that's your argument and i know you don't believe in that because i follow you <laughs> Unfortunately, I do think a lot of the worst stereotypes about lefties can be found in some groups in the left. Um, for example, conservatives will often say, lefties just hate white people. I don't think that's true. But there are a lot of lefties who do, unfortunately. And they go unchecked and unchallenged in many spaces on the left. And I critique them. But I'm capable simultaneously of pointing out to the conservative that they're retards, while also saying, like, turning around, looking back at the left and going, okay, but seriously, though, get this shit under control. Um, so I'm looking at the Jesse gender Twitter thread right now, and mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, it is basically saying like, if you keep using this, that's racist. I mean, it's, it's wrong for a lot of reasons. That's one of them. Like mm -hmm. this hashtag is for black folks killed by police violence for that community to mourn and fight. Um, that's not necessarily true. And we've already talked about the indigenous issue stuff. Like clearly that hashtag can be used for multiple things. Um, we white folks shouldn't steal it, Ugh. especially as all of us, not just white folks, are mourning. First, after listening, black folks, listening to black folks, I assume. The issue is how quickly white people co-opted the use of this hashtag. Second, how white folks got angry when this was pointed out and would rather argue than listen. Ah, see, right here. This is another one of those listening to black voices means not disagreeing with them things that I was mm -hmm. talking about, which feeds mm -hmm. to drain us both of energy and the ability to mourn. We are not mm -hmm. fighting for Brianna's name to even be heard. She made news. Um, that's not true. I think you can argue for the name of someone murdered in a hate crime to be heard no matter what. Um, I think it's ridiculous to uh, like imply that a hashtag was unwarranted because the trans girl who was murdered um, ended up getting more attention after backlash that was in part because of the people who were using the hashtag say her name. I think that's a very dumb thing to say. Um, the hashtag is for black women who are ignored by the mainstream, which is kind of funny because black women who are ignored by the, the mainstream, Breonna Taylor was not ignored by the mainstream. Breonna Taylor is one of the most well-known victims of police violence in the history of the United States. So Yes. Yeah. And the issue is that most black women who are brutalized by police, we don't know their names. They were saying that is what about, the hashtag is for. They were saying it about Breonna, though. So it's the so you keep saying what the hashtag is for. That's just not how it works. Slogans may have general trends and purposes, but they get repurposed and reused all the time. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that, um, as long as there's nothing like counterproductive or harmful happening. So, again, and I'm sorry if I'm not making myself clear, I agree that jumping on people's throats about this, even if they were ignorant, um, is not the correct take. But my critique is very specific. After the it was raised that maybe this is incoherent and is inappropriate to use in Brianna J's case and 
a lot of leftists' reactions was, you don't have a valid argument. What you're saying doesn't matter. Here are all the reasons why you're just using identity politics and are wrong. You saying Jesse Gender um, thing is disgusting. Um, stop calling me racist. I think that presents a lot of negative attitudes that contribute to infighting. Um, well, you need to deal with that the is stuff. my critique. You need to deal with the stuff appropriately in order to deal with infighting. As long as people have this attitude, infighting will be an inevitability on the left. So I think you need to be appropriately severe with it. Um, the the only criticisms that I have here are of behaviors like this. If all you have to say, if your argument uh, is that it, there's a bit of confusion in the use of that term, I think that's a fine thing to say. But if you don't want to defend the behavior of Jesse or of the original tweet thread, if you don't want to say it's racially insensitive or harmful even, then you and I, I don't think, uh, disagree on that much. I think we agree on the fundamentals here, which is that this is ridiculous behavior from Jesse and the left broadly. Um, I don't think it's ridiculous. I agree that there are woke scoldy elements in that. I agree that people can be offended about things that can be attributed to ignorance rather than malice. I don't think that's a hot take. I do think, though, that, again, and this is why I asked to talk to you, you have a lot of power and you could have shifted this narrative in a better direction, but you chose not to. And then you blame her for being a clout goblin, where it was also more materially advantageous for you to continue on your own arc of like leftists are just addicted to losing. They are addicted to losing. Whether or not there's a material incentive for me to say that doesn't matter. I think we both know I probably would have ended up being a lot more popular if I wasn't so willing to burn bridges with people at the slightest disagreement over a number of issues that I've had with the behavior Which of people Which isn't online. the definition of gatekeeping that you're so upset about? No, they burn bridges with me. I don't block other people. Jesse blocked me before making this thread. Everyone always no, blocks me. No, wait, 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 wait. No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I um, agree with you that you don't do the blocking. But if you, if you are networking, which you know a lot more about than me, and it is your job to create good relations with people, and then you choose to attack them in a way that isn't charitable and makes them look really bad, they might block you, but to claim that you weren't part of that interaction, that you couldn't have made actions to better run that interaction, is I don't think you can make that argument. You're a lot smarter than that. She blocked me after the negative things I had to say about her video on the Hogwarts Legacy boycott which I stand by. I'm not going to withhold mm -hmm. from critiquing people if I disagree what they do or say, but I'm not the one who burns the bridge. I'm always willing to talk to people off stream as well. I've never declined an opportunity to do so. If somebody has a disagreement with me, or they'd rather I take it a bit easier with them, I'm usually willing to accede to those points. I've deleted videos because people asked me to because they felt it made them look bad. I've refrained from posting videos from my stream because they, again, didn't want the negative attention. I'm usually pretty willing to accede to other people's sensitivity when it comes to disagreements I have with them. The problem is, you know, I'm just not a gigantic cuck. Uh, and I refuse to <laughs> completely withhold from disagreeing with people because they're the sensitive ones who will freak out and block and act as though I'm some kind of demon on the far side of the left um, just because I'm willing to openly disagree with them. Okay, um, then I'm going to be... I'm being a cuck right now because I'm I'm not being as forward as I should be. I think that it is unusual for me to see you, although it's becoming more frequent. I think it's a very almost um, reactionary sentiment to be like, hey, um, I'm critiquing you, so I'm going to call you disgusting and I'm now gatekeeping what I think you're doing wrong. So, like, you can critique. That's not that's gatekeeping. Fine. That's just critique. No, absolutely. But if you are talking about leftists are addicted to losing, you're kind of shooting inside of your own tank right now, aren't you? Which you're allowed to do, but I'm arguing that the way you're doing it is inflammatory rather than helpful to the cause that you want you say you want to promote. I understand why you might believe that, but I disagree. 
I used to have different okay. attitudes on the best way to deal with this kind of behavior, but unfortunately, I just don't think there's a constructive way of going about it. I think that okay. loud and open rejection is the best way of going about things, especially from my position, where I do attract the attention of a lot of people who aren't in the traditional left, you know? Like, I don't really care that much about moving people over to the left if they're already Steven Universe fans who have pick crew avatars and spend, you know, seven hours a day on Twitter disagreeing with each other over whether or not it's racist to use sans serif fonts. Um, yeah. I'm more interested in bringing over people who are a bit outside of the circle. And an open yes. disavowal of people with these ideas has actually historically been really effective in okay. convincing people that it's not always like that. I do the same thing with the anti-white tendencies for some people on the left. Mostly black mm -hmm. people, but not always. There are a lot of self-hating whites out there. They don't guide <laughs> leftist policy the way conservatives suggest they do. It's not like Bernie Sanders was going to bring about like white concentration camps or whatever. Um, but it mm -hmm. is an ideological weakness worth addressing. Yeah. So I think that if you're willing, which I think you have, to just say, look, my pre I'm willing to um, like vocally and potentially in a more like um, vitriolic way to kind of make sure very clearly that I'm separating myself from some people in the movement to make sure that I can um, like be appealing to a slightly different demographic. I think that's valid. Um, it's also my sincere I, feelings, by the way. There's no dishonesty there. It's not like I'm I I, I, I don't believe that there is. I, I don't think that you're an insincere person. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think that should matter to you what I think. But yeah, personally, I uh, I sometimes refer to myself as the Vosh whisperer. You probably have heard me whisper in your ear sometimes. Anyway, that was weird. I apologize. My point is just that I think our main disagreement at the end of the day is that uh, there are certain things that you believe are more beneficial to your advocacy. And personally, as a progressive, I think you could do things differently. And you say, I used to have those attitudes, but I have come to different conclusions about what's most effective. And like, I can respect that. I think I disagree with you. And I think it alienates a lot of people um, who want to be on your side. But I also agree that that's not who you're trying to appeal for. So I understand that wouldn't necessarily be your main concern. Do you think people like Jesse Gender want to be on my side? I've never really gotten that much of a camaraderie attitude from some communities on the left. Always come across to me like they'd rather be rid of me if at all possible. I'm interpreting this from the very subtle hints that I get, like the inbox is full of death threats that I receive from the left whenever I say stuff like, <laughs> we should care about men. Um, I, I don't really get the feeling that my, you know, my, my, uh, you know, camaraderie is, is, is being sought after here. Um, so I definitely think that some people, especially in the older realm are not necessarily interested. I think a lot of people remember you from like, um, your, origin days which i wasn't a part of maybe if i was i would have liked you less or no i don't know i i came in straight into like right after the height of the debate arc um right when you and destiny started having issues so that that's where i'm coming from if you're asking specifically about jesse jenner i'm really impressed by her as a human being I think she's one of the most genuine people on this space that are truly looking to do uh, praxis and unity. You guys might disagree on things, but I don't think she'd ever turn down something she believes would be um, helpful to the movement. But what if her I beliefs do are think... compromised? What do you mean? What if her beliefs are compromised? I'm not impugning her sincerity here. I don't think that she's a... Um you know, malevolent person. But I don't think a lot of people on the left really understand what needs to be done to get real progressive victories out here. Um, oftentimes, they're very always online. I mean, God, that stuff about the Hogwarts legacy discourse, it just, just to be crazy, with, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, like that's just, just one. I, I You know, I, I don't have much faith in the average online lefty's ability to decide what's good for them in a political sense, you know? Like, a lot of them really do seem to be kind of marching blissfully towards the um, towards oblivion because they have no idea what actual coalition building looks like. 
And Do you mind if I quickly answer just the general sentiment that you presented? Sure. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. You're not. Go um, ahead. I think that the reason why I am not as uh, upset with you or haven't been as vocal about my disagreements that I have with you as I have with someone like Destiny is because I believe that you're much more um, like by all accounts, like an ally and a progressive. I'm taller um, too. That, <laughs> um, I just mean that you seem to be more um, ideologically and ethically dedicated to progressivism. Um, I think he likes fighting more than he likes progressivism, even if he is a progressive, um, which is why it's not that I don't have critiques of you. That is why I'm here. But I believe my type of advocacy is that I don't want to shoot inside my own tank. I'll probably just ignore the people that I think are silly. Um, and you might say that's bad advocacy. But the thing is, like, Destiny has his, um, like, space in the pipeline. And so do you. Like, I don't, I think leftists who say, like, yeah, Vosh is just whatever the fuck. Like, you read this post even. I think it was in your Reddit. And it was like, yeah, everyone who starts off with Vosh moves on from him because they realize he's, like, meh. And, like, even if that's true... That's like a valid part of the chain. Like we need that. Like I'm here because at the beginning I was impressed and now I'm less impressed and that's okay. Like that doesn't mean that you're invaluable to the movement, but I do have strong disagreements because like, obviously I'd want you to advocate in a way that I think is more ethical, but I think you're very ethically rigorous and I just personally appreciate that, you know? But I, I do think, and I'm sorry to bring up Destiny again. I just don't want to see you turn into this like hate monster of like, oh, progressives and woke scolds and oh, they sort of like, it's just really weird to see you come out with the same titles that he does about how silly leftists are. And I'm like, Vosh, I agree that there are a lot of terminally online Twitter lefties who are crazy. I just think that's not where the focus should be on, you know? And it's okay that you disagree with that, um, you're, you know what you're doing. You're successful. I'm not right. Um, but yeah, that's just my critique, I guess. Leaving aside his proclivities, ultimately here, I think the distinction is that I'm sincerely interested in the left being stronger than it is right now. Obviously that's what everybody says when they don't want to own up to their, to use an example, seething deranged hatred of a group of people. Um, mm -hmm. you know, one may or may not beat the spite allegations, to be sure. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not particularly spiteful against any of these people. People block me, not the other way around. I'll have private conversations with people who I feel have wronged me. I'll do it for or without content. I've made content decisions that were objectively bad for my channel because I felt it was morally right to do so, or even interpersonally kind. Um, Which I've is had... why I appreciate you. I, I know that you do all these things. So right? my, my interest in rebutting and attacking the um you know more reactionary element of the left the 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 woke scolds or this or that or whatever um it's it's not born out of some kind of grand crusade that i'm orchestrating against them or anything like that it's just a simple product of my critiques and the ways in which i think it's most effective to levy them i don't think kindness yeah. is really on the menu here i'm certainly not treated with it by them but i don't hate them for it some of them are just stupid which isn't a crime a lot of them are just constantly exposed to latent social antagonism to me. In an environment like that, most people will just accept it. Very few people will hear from all their friends, compatriots, content creators they like, oh, this Vosh guy is terrible, and then think to question it. Some will, but mm. for the most part, you know, people have to take things at a given at times. We just don't have enough time in the day to independently research everything we're told. We have to pick and choose. No, but I get that. With yeah, all sorry. of that being said, and I just want to, to cap this off, with, mm. with all of this being said, you know, um, I have been wildly unsuccessful in trying to reach out to, um, to these people. The last time that I did so with any success, reach out to a person who I felt had some kind of like pre-existing dislike of me over an issue that I could have made into a content bomb but did not, or at least didn't try to, was with Cat Black who was misrepresenting a position that I had with regards to the JK Rowling sexism thing, I yes, DM'd I her on Twitter. That. Yeah, and I spent, about an, I spent about an hour trying to talk to her directly. Hey, this yeah. is what I think. I think you're misrepresenting me. And she essentially just made fun of me in DMs the entire time. 
which, you know. Yes, I remember. Right. My ego is strong. I, I'll be fine. But then the <laughs> next morning, she posted a 100 tweet thread, including links to archives of all the things that I had said with her. Not that I was wrong in any of them, sure, but still, Jesus. Um, and then went um, it, the, the whole thing. And that ended up burning the Contra Bridge with me. That was the last time I tried to reach out on good terms to somebody who was behaving in that way. And it literally led to Contra blocking me. I, I understand. Uh, just very quickly, like, I think that I, I completely hear what you're saying and I know what you mean. I think that we both disagree. I think that there's a way to critique the, I, I think both yours, I'm not saying that you're hateful of lefties and that's why you critique them. I just personally don't think that the critique, the way you do it is what I think is helpful necessarily, but we are working off very different demographics and you're successful and I'm not. So like, you know better than I do. Um, but to address the cat black thing, um, yeah, I think Eris brought up a super interesting point about how Cad Black probably went into that inter because you told her that you don't want to drag her on stream, and that was the first message you sent her. And Eris brought up actually that Cad Black probably thought you were like threatening her, and that's why she was so aggressive. But I am bringing this up because. I was actually really upset about the cat black situation. I was also upset with you that when she brought up, um, like you guys being sexually, um, uh, like involved at some point, you kind of laughed it off. And I thought it was completely inappropriate of her to do so. And I really wanted you to like make that clear as well, because that was a very clear case of like, if the, if the genders were reversed, we would be very upset. And I just didn't think that deserved to be laughed at. Now, I can't tell you how to deal with like people airing your dirty laundry and I get that you're a dude and stuff. I just I just found that a missed opportunity to like raise awareness in that moment. I only wish but, she had leaked my nudes. I looked incredible in them. <laughs> um, I will not comment on that. Um, but to maybe like. You'll hate me for this. Oh, my God. Um, I'm quite upset about the Professor Flowers stuff. I can't hate you for it. It keeps getting brought up um, against my will. I mean, you could call that But another... I think it's getting brought up because, again, um, maybe the critiques are not being levied towards you in a way that is accessible to you to hear. I don't think they're invalid. Maybe nobody... Maybe I have different critiques. I don't know. But the fact that it keeps getting brought up and you keep batting it away the way you do indicates to me that's like, okay, he has not, he doesn't understand what the critique is. Cause I know that if he would understand, he would see the issue. Um, so yeah, I, well, I then guess that's if, just like a personal. I, what if I yeah. see the issue and I just disagree? I think that, okay. Could, if you have the time, would you, would you mind explain to me what you think the issue is? I don't know what the issue is. People just seem to take issue with the fact that I disagree with a black woman. See, but you can't see. Oh, what that if is, I see the issue and that, I disagree? And that then... is what the issue is. That is not what. The... Oh, it, my God. It is now what I the might issue hate is. You. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm losing. Brain. What's more, so it's sorry. actually all the issue is. The discussion could have been on it a number of topics, not. but the ultimate outcome wouldn't have fundamentally changed. The disagreement okay. here is ultimately that it's, I was about to say it was uppity of me, it was a white man, to disagree with a black woman. Well, that's their critique, not mine. Yeah, they think this, that. Um, this is such a bad faith interpretation of a critique that is being levied to you often. And it's just that, that it I am feels... Uppity, yes. no... Which I am, to okay. be fair. It's not necessarily okay. wrong, but I was still right in that discussion. If you don't want to talk about this, that's completely fine. I can make like genuine critiques, but if if this is like more of like a thing that you want to like put aside, I, I won't press you on it. Hit this, me with right? your best shot. I think that you are might be rightfully upset that people are claiming that you're racist. And I think the reason why people bring that up is because they see a pattern that you have an element of dismissing um, 
critiques that are levied to you from black creators mostly as just oh it's just black people being upset that i disagree with them when the a lot of people's um critique of you about what happened with professor flowers is that you interpreted her in an incredibly inflammatory and uncharitable way and then proceeded to do so even though she and other people tried to explain her positions to you and that was just really unfortunate for her because she had to deal with your community so She's... it's unfair of you to say that it was about disagreeing because my... you framed her arguments my framing in an of her unfair way my framing of her arguments was and is fair she is either too stupid or too dishonest to be forthcoming about her positions but i've accurately identified them if i know her better than herself then that's embarrassing for her but i won't back off it don't you think that's incredibly arrogant um i mean she's she's failing to meet a pretty low bar here so if anything i would put the blame on her okay so just just to like inquire so all the people who are upset at you about the Professor of Flowers, um, all of them actually either secretly agree with you and are just on her side because she's black and you're white, or they hate you. But it's impossible that an, a, a large amount of people who are upset about you about that incident just actually think you framed her in a really inflammatory way and then argued against, shadow boxed against you know, an argument that she wasn't making. A lot of them haven't even seen the debate. FD Signifier still hasn't. I just think that like a lot of people, they're weak. They hear a narrative and they repeat it. They've heard it so many times that they continue to repeat it. I was right but then and I I'm still But I am not right. FD Signifier. I'm here. I'm levying this critique. And you're now brushing me off as what well critique? as just a black person sympathizer. Wait, a hold sympathizer. on. There. Blech, hold on. My biases mm -hmm. here aren't against black people. There are plenty of white people that I've disagreed with. There has been an unfortunate trend of black people disagreeing with my behavior concerning Professor Flowers, which disproportionately skews disagreement between me and black people, but that's really their choice to keep getting involved in that argument with me. If I, for some reason, was extremely well-known in the black conservative community and they kept wanting to argue with me about tax issues, then I'm sure that would also <laughs> disproportionately ramp it up. But no, uh, I don't think there's anything racially biased about my assessment here. It's not as though I, I treat I'm white people saying who that it is. very well. I, I don't think you're racially biased. I think you saw an opportunity to make a good video that make you seem really good. And um, that's just unfortunate for Professor Flowers and unfortunate for like black advocacy. I was exceedingly and I resent kind that you her. chose to do that. I was exceedingly kind to her in the three hour debate. Uh, it was her fault for being who she is, either being too, again, stupid or dishonest to own to her points and to repent for them, frankly, given how bad they are. I mean, that debate okay. opened with her doing a brownie points joke with me. Like, like here's a brownie, like, oh, Vosh, you white boy, here's a good boy point for listening to me. Or I, for, I forget the exact thing. It was a couple years ago. Okay, um, if that's how you feel, and I, I know you're, you're done with the, the Professor Flowers discourse. No, 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 no. I what? haven't finished my point. What did I miss? Let me talk. Thank you. All I was going to say is that if you are interested, I would either publicly or privately sit down on the transcript with you and I will show you where you inflammatorily inserted things that were not needed. Um, I know you're done with that, so you probably wouldn't want to do this, but I don't think I'm wrong on this. I think that you um, saw a good opportunity to make content. It worked out great. It created a lot of content. And I think now you're just. We can do it right you... now if you want. Or you can oh, tell God. me what assessment I've made of her character and positions you feel is inaccurate. I think that to take professors, uh, Professor Flowers' arguments and then claiming, and you have done so repeatedly on dozens of streams, that she is genocidal towards white people mm -hmm. is an awful thing to say. I agree. It's an awful thing to be, too. She was justifying... But that's not what she is. She was saying that the black people in South Africa 
had a moral right to mass deport the white people who lived there because the colonized should not have to suffer the indignation of continuing to live with their colonizers. And her definition of colonizers is white people, which she has not only implicitly reaffirmed multiple times, but explicitly stated in a conversation with him. There's no ambiguity to it. She was defending, morally, the idea of deporting six million white South Africans, which is objectively the de definition of ethnic cleansing, and depending Can on I which definition of genocide you go by, Sorry. still fits mm -hmm. just fine. Um, so this is like a genuine question, and I get this is a bit heated, so I, I hope you can take it in good faith. Because mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I've recently <laughs> I've been engaging with Destiny, so people want me to learn what descriptive and prescriptive means. So I'm, I'm, I'm still like <laughs> learning how to use those terms, basically. <laughs> um, and so... If we said that, um, and I don't, I don't necessarily agree with your framing, but I'm just interested in this as a concept. So if we said that um, black people in South Africa had the moral right to deport colonizers, i.e. white people, is that a prescriptive or a descriptive? By saying, so first of all, we need to take a step back from the specifics and talk about how we would interpret these claims in any other context. So okay. if somebody was saying, well, Hitler had the right to deport all the Jews from Germany prior to him settling on the final solution, or if mm -hmm. somebody was to say, well, Americans had the right to um, mass excise Native Americans from their territory, um, mm -hmm. you would fairly interpret that as an endorsement of that behavior no, in colloquial yes. language. And again, Professor Flowers isn't some philosophy professor. Colloquially, when you're saying somebody or something has the moral right to do something, what you are actually doing is saying it's up to them, it's their choice. Not in a descriptive sense, because ultimately, obviously, everything is up to their choice. I mean, even up to the Holocaust, technically, it was literally the decision of the government that led it to happen, right? Like, we're not talking about, oh, well, we exist in a system with free will. We're talking about mm -hmm. a moral choice, as in it is right that they have the ability to do this and it is right that they have the option to exercise it. In colloquial okay. language, that is what people mean when they say that. I don't think a descriptive interpretation of our framing makes any sense, because if that was the case, she could have been saying just as easily, ah, well, I think the white people of South Africa have the moral right to deport all the black people. Because in a descriptive sense, that statement would have been equally coherent, a flat statement of the power of government and the ability for it to do big demographic changes like that. But obviously she wouldn't and didn't say that because she wasn't no, talking descriptively. No, no. Oh my God, that's silly. She was, okay. If we're assuming that it is a descriptive, and I do agree with you that to just claim it's a descriptive, so you're not implicitly making a prescriptive as well with a descriptive that is loaded, or that I, is I, questionable. Her claim is prescriptive. She's defending the right for the black people in South Africa to do that. She would not defending say... Defending the... Hmm, she would okay, not sorry. say, oh, well, I also think it's the moral right of white people in South Africa to deport all the black people. She would never say that because she's not just making a descriptive statement of what governments are capable of doing. She's talking about what morally is permissible. She, was, she wasn't I... ambiguous with this. She was talking explicitly, the colonized people should not have to suffer to coexist with their colonizers. Like these are not like this. This would be like saying like um like you you read like a neo Nazi transcript and they're saying something like white people should not have to bear the weight of the Jew and they're like ah oh, well technically they're just saying that they don't have to it's like no obviously they're making a statement you know okay so Whew. that was a lot apologies but that's the full context <laughs> yeah um so I guess. My question, and maybe I've missed that. I didn't interpret um, Professor Flowers' general claims to be um, that the moral right of black people not to live next to their oppressor having much to do with governmental power. But she, what so, we were talking in the context of the removal of six million white South Africans. 
Okay, so um, to make an, an equivalency, and I don't know if it purely tracks, so let me just think out loud and I'll see how I feel about this. Uh, I might take it all back, so um, like close the recording for a second. Um, so if I say that um, Palestinians have the moral right to claim um, to to make their claim over um, the territory of Palestine, that does not imply that they have the governmental power to do so or that they can. It just means that they have the, that moral right. Like the moral right is not being um, sanctified or by like if you are capable of executing said action. No, but you're saying if you were to say that, if they have the moral right to do that, your argument would be if they had the power to and chose to, they would be okay then in they, doing so. They would be. They would have the moral right to do so. Yes. yes. Do you think that is genocidal? If it involved um, the mass execution or deportation of Israeli people, it would absolutely be ethnic cleansing by definition. Um, it would almost certainly be genocide by any definition as well. There are probably some incredibly contrived circumstances like a long-term resettlement program uh, that you could argue aren't genocidal because it would be more of a, like a reclamation of previously held national land, but like 99.999, mm -hmm. yeah, that would be genocidal. So you'd have an issue with people claiming that Palestinians have a moral right to Palestine? Um, well, it would depend on what they mean by that. If they mean Palestinians have a moral right to exist there as full citizens, then no, I don't have an issue with that. If they're, the real meaning of their statement was a, a remind, to like remove all Israeli people, then potentially that could be genocidal depending on exactly how it went down. Usually it would be. Yeah. So I, I argue basically that considering all the context and like extra conversations and potentially even in the conversation with you, although I, I'll be willing to buy the bullet that maybe Professor Flowers was not best at like expressing herself during um, that specific debate with you, but just the so many, like so, so much content of hers and yours was made around her claims. And there was an infinite amount of time to like, let her explain what she means by moral right to like, get out of this genocidal narrative. And my critique is just that maybe you don't feel like she ever provided that context. I just disagree with that. And I just think that's unfortunate. I think your disagreement um, is incorrect. I think your framing okay. of this situation is willfully ignorant. Um, in any oh, other on. in any other context, if somebody was to say, yes, by colonizers, I mean white people. No, non-white people should not have to suffer to coexist with white people in this space. Um, yeah, I think they have the moral right to get rid of those, to deport those white people if they want. I think anybody acting in good faith would interpret so that as an endorsement of ethnic cleansing. Okay, if you heard Professor Flowers say, all white people are colonizers, and I heard Professor Flowers say that she doesn't think all white people are colonizers, what do we do then? Do we assume that she's lying and she actually thinks all white people are colonizers? Yes. If there's a person- That is silly. No, it's not. If there's a person whose politics gravitate towards a specific reactionary tendency, and at one point they admit something and then later they deny it, I think it's perfectly reasonable to not interpret them uh, charitably. So we see this all the time with like racists. So like, for example, you'll have like a white politician get outed because there's some old clip of them referring to black people as monkeys. And then they'll be like, haha, I don't really think that. And then it's like, ah, oh, well, which one do we take at face value? The one they said in private or, or under pressure or under like a heated context? Or do we believe the one they said afterwards as a way of covering up for the PR damage from the first one? You know, like, of course. Okay. Her politics are so, pretty anti-white in general. She's seething with that energy. So I think it's okay to... Um... Okay. Then I see what the issue is. You are just, um, you think that you've seen enough data for you to not uh, grant um, charitability to any of what she's saying. I mean, she also um, said it a bunch. Like, a, she she didn't just like accidentally slip up one time and say, yeah, I think all white people are colonizers. She insistently reaffirmed that. In her conversation with him, she said it most explicitly. But I asked incredulously if she felt that way multiple times during our debate, and she consistently affirmed it. It okay. wouldn't be that hard so, for her to back off that position. She was given every opportunity. Okay. Um, 
I will do research and I will create a compilation of things and I'll DM it to you. And if you'll ha ever have the time and you'll end up looking at it, I'd be interested in your thoughts. But I might just come to your conclusion. I just doubt it because I've, I've watched a lot of her explanations of what happened. Um, what did her explanations say her position was with regards to the ethnic cleansing subject? She said that she never brought up ethnic cleansing and she was just trying to talk about black uh, liberation and how you a lot of the time um, compare black nationalism to um, white nationalism and how she was trying to like explain the different and how those two things are not analogous, um, whether I agree with that or not. And basically, while she was trying to make that explanation, genocide was brought up. And in that context, she was just trying to explain how that fits into like her greater narrative about black nationalism. OK, but when she talks about black self-liberation, what did she, what does she mean by that? What do you I'm sorry, what? Well, so so what was she prescribing then? You said you saw her talking about it. What was mm -hmm. like? What was she arguing in favor of? So I made comparisons allegedly between black and white nationalism. Okay, mm -hmm. what did she say that I then used to make that comparison? What what position was she defending? Did she just abstractly say I support black liberation? And I was like, aha, just like Hitler. Or did she say something else, maybe pertaining to a specific country with specific demographics? Um, I I believe she did in your discussion with her, but I believe the context. From what I understood that she said, it seems that that was brought up to, um, like, give an illustration to her point, right? To deport all white people from South Africa? If you want to look at it uncharitably, then I guess. Uh, Wait, but, but what, what other thing was she saying? Because she explicitly said that. So you're, I'm not, it wasn't an interpretation. That was a statement okay. that she made. Let, let me try to maybe, maybe I'm not communicating clearly. I apologize. So I think that when you say, yeah, the Jews had every right to like try to kill all the Nazis during the Holocaust. And also they had that right. Like if they could have told the future, they probably should have done that before um, a lot of the acts were implemented because that would have prevented the genocide. Then me calling, calling, then me saying that you are um, advocating for a mess genocide of Germans would be nonsensical. But right? I don't think there's much of a comparison there because South Africa is a democracy. It's, it's not, apartheid was lifted. It's currently ruled by black people. They're the majority okay. in their Congress. <laughs> They're, no, the no. Black, black South Africans aren't currently resisting an ongoing colonial threat. They share a country with white citizens who are born, many of them, in a free country. Yes. I'm not arguing her points for her. I'm saying that what you took as like a claim to genocide, maybe I misunderstood her and you're completely right, okay? But from what I understood of her explanations... She was using the example of South Africa to explain a broader concept and then was called genocidal for using that as a way to illustrate like a difference or a right or a point. Now, you might say, rightfully so, hey, if you're demonstrating this on an existing country, that has very strong implications and that's irresponsible. I wouldn't say that's genocidal, but we can disagree on that. But you know? the, the context was her talking about not having to live with your colonizers anymore. And by colonizers, she meant white people. Uh, I heard her say that she doesn't think all the colonizers. Uh, hold on one second. Do you second. want me to just concede on this? Well, I was um, like... <laughs> hold on. Like here, So here's like a tweet screenshot. So mm -hmm. hold on. Somebody said you literally equivocated colonizer with white in multiple streams. Go back to the VSG hug box with the rest of the dipshits. And Professor Flowers responded, quote, you literally equivocated colonizer with white in multiple streams, end quote. This is genuinely so funny to me that you want me to be ashamed about this lull. Okay. There, there, so you think there aren't she colonizers thinks... in South Africa anymore. It was colonized hundreds of years ago. Apartheid was lifted. White and black people are both citizens. 
Yes. It's not a colony of any country. Yes. So in what other context would colonizer not mean white people if we're talking well, about a country where there wait, are wait, literally wait. no colonizers right now? So you think because um, South Africa have gained democracy and is no longer an apartheid country that um, completely erases the history historical context of of like why there are so there are white people in like positions of power and and, and disproportionate wealth so in wait, South are, so wait, Africa. you're so you're making her argument right now so, so I don't want to make her argument you for her. Wait, but you're, I'm you're, fine moving past but you're this. doing the thing she did where it's like ah <sighs> so did you know colonization had an impact lots of things have had an impact France had a monarchy and now they don't but the legacy of the monarchy has influenced France today. But if you started saying like, yeah, we want to kill all the French monarchists, like, what does that mean? There are no colonizers right now in South Africa. And then, so you're like, okay, there are no colonizers, but aren't there like still white people? Yeah, there are. That's what she was saying. She was saying okay. white people. So I think that you could argue that she was irresponsible or maybe misguided in her use of language. And you can even say, well, she doubled down on it, so fuck her. Um, I already said, we can. I don't think that makes her genocidal, simply because I don't think that's her beliefs from what I've heard her talk about. Um, but yeah, maybe she, did, she had a bad showing. I you don't know? understand why people are like this. This is the most straightforward, like, Man, I, I genuinely don't understand it, you know. There's a lot of ambiguity in the difficulties that I have disagreeing with other people on the left, but Professor Flowers mm -hmm. has always been the most overt case that just boggles my mind how anybody could look at what happened and what was said and not just go, oh, yeah, she's just in favor of ethnic cleansing. An objective statement on her part. Unambiguous. There's no matter for interpretation or bad or good faith. This is why mm -hmm. I'm confident in it. There's not really room to disagree with me. There's a right and a wrong position. Um, okay. but I, but for some reason, people trend towards the, no, I wouldn't just call it charitable. I'd say like the, the delusional or, or the anti-empiricist perhaps, mm -hmm. which I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about her. I don't know if it's because she so successfully whined about me afterwards or complained about Do harassment. Do you think it's because community. it's you and they just like have a hate boner for you? I mean, that's probably a large part of it. You know, a bias against <laughs> one. Well, if you, if, if you hear about a dispute between two people one of whom is a black woman, and one of whom gets repped as a racist in the left, a lot of people are just going to intuitively take the anti-me position um, okay. without investigating. I can tell you personally why I'm very amenable to this, but I, I it's very like personal, so I don't think it would really help you with the other people. Well, is it, well, is it because I'm white and she's not? No. <laughs> are, you sure, are you sure? Because people say no, but then it just it keeps coming up, you know? Do you want to hear my personal argument or do you want to assume that it's because you're white? Well, you, you should provide it because otherwise I will assume that. I'm trying. So I have I have very strong positions about the Israel-Palestine conflict. And when I discuss it, because my um, positions are nuanced and generally unrecognized in this sphere and are not very popular, um, people have a really hard time understanding what I'm saying. And they assume that I am anti-Semitic. They assume I hate Jewish people. They assume I am fine with Jewish people dying and a lot of stuff like that. I was accused of that yesterday when I joined a Discord server to hang out, you know? So I'm definitely, I understand like trying to make a nuanced point and then people taking it in a really weird way and like accusing you in a lot of vile shit. But that's just that's my personal um, experience. Ooh, I don't think um, what's his name, the the what? guy that looks better without a beard but has a beard. Um, Heem, I think Heem's beard looks nice. No, 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 I don't care about Heem. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy that you hate that you got upset that he made the video about you. Noah Samson. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think Noah Samson has the same perspective I do, right? Um, but that's just like, I understand how trying to make a nuanced argument and maybe not being a good debater can make you seem a lot crazier than you are. Um, but that's just like my personal sympathies, you well, know? If your sympathies are towards the person who gets accused of having the worst position, I feel like you'd be biased in favor of me. The majority of people who are familiar <laughs> with the me and Professor Flowers thing will probably side with Professor Flowers. 
My community is big, but it's not as big as the entirety of the people who hate me. That's a much larger community than I can field. So you want me to be biased towards you? Is that what you mean? Well, if your bias is towards people who you feel get maligned with ridiculous positions, then I feel like, if anything, that would be to my benefit. No, no, no. I feel like I feel like I have watched enough of her context and explanation of what happened there to understand that there might have been a miscommunication added with the fact that it is extremely advantageous for you to not say, hey, me, hey maybe I was a bit too unreasonable with this and by I unreasonable i just un no, 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 no by unreasonable i just mean that you have spent what it's been like over a year like every time she's brought up you maintain this point that she is basically a genocidal like maniac and that's what i think that's shitty because I don't think that's what she is. But if you believe that's truly who she is authentically and you have no charitability towards her, then I can't follow you for that. I just disagree with that analysis of who she is, you know? I don't think it's really an analysis. I just think it's a straightforward read of her positions. I don't really think it has to do with charitability, but, um, you know, if you want to compile those points, you're free to. I um I, I have seemingly a yes. limitless capacity for revisiting this one conversation. She's always free, of course, to have a second one with me, though obviously she never would. Um, there's well, uh, she got a lot of hate. No, she so did. So I, yes. Oh, oh, okay. I'm not going into this. I just want to make a final point. Um, because I'm already here. So why the fuck not? Yeah, you need to do your research and come up with a coherent position on Israel because you you got banned off of Twitch for saying some shit and then you talk to Eris with the whole uh, bad empanada nonsense and you are flip-flopping, dude. And I need to debate Israel with you and it's hard when you don't have a position. So do that. Are you going to Thank accuse you. me of being pro-Israel? You're probably more pro-Israel than I am. Like, then so. what, what on earth could you... What, whatever position I arrived at, I have no idea what kind of um, insane TOS flagging disagreements you would want to have with me. I'm, <laughs> I'm probably in favor of a two-state solution, not because I think it's morally preferable to a one-state solution, but rather because I don't think a one-state solution is a realistic policy goal. Um, you know, I agree with you. Yeah, so w if we agree, a two-state solution is like, considered a i think a moderate liberal solution long term what positions do you have that are getting you accused of being an anti-semite um i don't believe jewish people have like an inherent right to israel or shit like that well i don't i don't um, I, I mean i agree with that i don't think anyone has an inherent right to any land based on their race or ethnicity that's what i say yeah um, I also claim that it had it whiffs of like white supremacists the way that the Israeli ethno state is it's basic. You know the arguments that you made about like uh, the Professor Flowers makes about black people. That's how I feel about Jewish people in Israel. Oh, but no. people can people conflate. What happens is, and I've learned this late, unfortunately. Um, in America, talking about Jewish people is punching down. But I was born and raised in Israel, so we uh, like Jewish people are the dominant. Um, like hegemony um so for me talking about jewish people in the context of israel is punching up but i'm in an american space and when i talk about jewish people um americans get like very shaky in their boots because they're ignorant um so they think i'm being anti-semitic when i'm just criticizing well i racist do think jewish people in israel <laughs> i do think it would be anti-semitic to say that you should like deport all Jews from the Middle East or from Israel. I would never argue for that. I think that's silly. Um, but that is what that, Professor I, Flowers probably believes. Doubt she's as honest. I don't believe she believes in that. But just to very quickly, <laughs> um, so the part of the disagreement is that I get that you're friends with Eris. Eris is a really cool person. I thought the takes you chose to have in that whole situation, I get you don't like bad empanada, but Eris have said things that clearly support like the concept of an ethno state and the concept of Jewish people having an inherent right to the land of Palestine. 
and like their continuing of like dominating that space and whether she is for um, a two state solution or not, which I believe that she is, which is the correct solution. Fact of the matter is she does support the ethno state of Israel to remain. And, and I guess that we both like pragmatically say, yeah, whatever, let the Jews have that. But the fact that she doesn't morally condemn that concept is reprehensible to me. And I feel like as a progressive, it should be reprehensible to you. Maybe it wasn't important for you to make that point, but I just found that to be unfortunate considering how I thought you felt about Israel. I mean, I just didn't get that. I, um, I'm sure she has positions on Israel that I would disagree with, though I would have to see specific ones to really like say anything. However, positions, I'm pr every position that I've ever heard about Eris, even ones I've disagreed with, haven't been any more radical than what's considered a moderate Zionist position here in the States, you know? Yeah, a kind absolutely. Of lightly pro ethno state attitude towards Israel is basically the yeah. default position in America, unless you're some kind of radical. Um, absolutely. Which which means that like even if I had those disagreements with her, um, it, it wouldn't it probably wouldn't be something that I'd feel like a need to call her out on. I mean, there are lots of things I don't call people out on when I'm directly talking to them. I don't even remember okay. what I talked about with her the last time I did. I do find her to be quite an agreeable, you know, um, lady. She's, she's quite... wonderful. She's so lovely. Um, and she's so charitable and she has a great analysis of social issues. Um, she, she, I, yeah, I have a lot of positive feelings. I was just genuinely disappointed that it was never really brought up. Um, especially when you were basically, uh, when Bad Empanada was making his points, you were even telling her, do you think he's just being anti-Semitic? Um, oh, I do, I do I, think he's anti-Semitic, yeah. No, I, I kind of, <laughs> I am almost completely inclined to believe that. Um, but fact of the matter is he was making solid arguments regarding her positions as he was criticizing them. And maybe you say an anti-Semite doesn't get to make like legitimate um, uh, positions, uh, like, sorry, critiques about another Jewish person's, like, content. But I just found it personally irking that you did not say, yeah, I... Because you were watching and you were hearing the statements that she was saying, and the entire time you, you didn't even, like... Um, Sorry, I'm I'm a bit. Wait, brain I don't, wait, I don't right remember. Now. Did I go over a drama video about Eris? If so, I have no recollection of this at all. Um, you were just like having her on to talk about the drama with Bad Empanada, but you didn't watch the Bad Empanada video or her video. I don't believe. And if you have, you did not. Uh, you did not like rebut her positions, which were I only for a Jewish ethno state. Yeah, I, I only watch Lego videos in my off time. Sorry. Um, yeah, as, as that's for, fine. As for her positions, I don't know. Um, even if I found stuff that I disagreed with, like, entirely, I don't really know what relevance that has to the specific conversation we were having, you know? Like, gr agreeing with something Bad Empanada has said because he incidentally stumbled into a position that may or may not have been correct would be like listening to, um, would be like listening to, like, Nick Fuentes say that dependency on OnlyFans girls is, um, is, like, bad for guys' mental health, and then for me to do, like, a whole thing agreeing with him, or gotta hand it to him, or whatever. Which, of course, I don't. Um, I've just never yeah. felt, I've never really felt it that, um, compelling to, I guess, virtue signal as, like, a, a guy who's really critical of Israel, because I feel like I got my chops out of the way on that one early. Like, I disagree True. with a lot of people on a lot of things. I feel like nobody's going to follow me knowing anything about me and think, like, ah, you know, this guy's strategic ambiguity on Israel is really appealing to me. <laughs> Somebody who loves Israel. I'm I'm going to choose to not Google Vosh Israel. Yeah, so so I've never I've never felt like I had to put in that much work on 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 making well, my positions on that one like super militant. Well, my personal opinion is that I I feel like you are too fucking ambiguous for me. And so maybe that, that's just like my own personal pet peeve. I guess it is because I'm pretty like I'm probably more anti-Zionist than you are. But like, yeah, that just like confused me because I was like, 
I feel like he should have a different position from this, but he's just sitting here with Eris talking about how bad Empanada is an anti-Semite when he was living genuine critiques about arguments she was making about a, a Jewish ethno state. And I, I was just like, Vosh, come the fuck on. Are I, you serious? I don't think I've watched this video though. So I, I mean, I haven't like deliberately That's avoided making point. a point. Well, okay, but I haven't watched lots of videos critiquing people. Um, no, no, no. Okay, this is unfair. I'm saying you had Eris on to like do you a little like allyship thing, and it's fine if you don't want to watch the video. I'm sorry I said little, and it's condescending, but like my point is, you had her on sympathetic to her plight with bad empanada. You didn't watch the video, but fact of the matter is, Eris has pro-Israel, pro-Zionism positions. Well, I'm, and maybe, I know that. Wait, 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 please, 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 please. I'll, I'll be, I'll be done. I'm so sorry. Um, and maybe you didn't feel the need to call that out. But for me, as a person that, like, I don't feel like Israel is discussed enough in this space, and knowing that I felt like you and I were on the same page with that, I really wanted to hear that call out, you know? Um, and it didn't happen, and that was just like a personal disappointment. And I was like, okay, so is he like okay with Israel now? Like, what's happening? I'm can because Eris is his friend, so we're we're cool with this now. I don't understand. Well, I haven't you know? called you out on your anti-Semitism, but we're having a friendly conversation. You think I'm an anti-Semite? No, I'm just trying to make a point. I can't I can't call everyone out for everything I disagree with them on every time I talk to them. For one, if but I did you that, were I would talking about you were talking about her being critiqued for impositions about well, Israel. No, well, no, no, no. I was talking about her dealing with a lunatic. Okay, I did not rush to her defense to start providing pro-Zionist arguments. Um, I don't even remember the well, context I'm glad of the to conversation. Hear that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I don't think I'd ever get to have a friendly convo with anyone under any circumstances. I mean, I talked with Keffels recently. Keffels has been subject to a lot of drama. Um, Keffels hasn't like exclusively done stuff that I agree with, but. I think that it's important to kind of be holistically against sort of like weird harassment behavior, like what um, BE stands for, whether or not you fully agree with everything a person believes or says, especially if you're open and public about the kinds of things that you disagree on anyway, you know? How like, can you say that and then say that Professor Flowers didn't experience harassment after you guys' interaction? Uh, she experienced like some, I think like the normal amount that you would get for being online and disagreeing with a large content creator, but I don't think she experienced yeah. much at all. I mean, I didn't see it. Wait, wait, you can't say some and then experience much at all. Come on. I, a, a very small amount. My community is pretty responsible. Uh, she could have, like, made me look really bad by demonstrating it, but she never did. Like, she could have, my mods contacted her to try to get screenshots, like, effort with, they blocked, she blocked my mods, of course. Um, and, mm. uh, like, any effort to kind of substantiate it in any way. Because you can claim, like, any kind of harassment, right? Like, I, like at yeah. any point in time. It's not like I've yeah. said, you know, I get death threats all the time. First of all, a lot of the death threats that I get are visible on Twitter, so you can see them. But also, a lot of the <laughs> stuff I get over email, DMs. And people don't ask me to substantiate that, in large part because, like, it's kind of obvious. Like, I'm Vosh. Of course I get death threats. But when it comes to someone like Professor Flowers, who isn't, you know the number one most reviled figure in the online left from the mm -hmm. left. I would like some kind of evidence, especially if you're going to clout Goblin off of this alleged harassment, which she certainly oh. did. Um, <sighs> but I didn't see any. So, like, what am I to do with that? Let me tell you what I think, and I, I've heard similar uh, things that uh, Sonia said. I, I think what happens is, and maybe large creators kind of forget this, I have... 300 followers on Twitch, okay? So let's say um, a thousand people from your chat end up finding me on Discord or on YouTube or on Twitch, and they just like, and I get all of that extra attention. I'm not saying that is harassment. I feel like when people feel harassed, um, it's less about like getting death threats. But I remember like the first convo I had with Destiny where we had a disagreement, I just had a lot of people from DGG just tell me they are from DGG. And because I knew there was hostility, I was like, oh, this is why people talk about being harassed because you're getting a lot of attention and you're feeling attacked. So even though no one is actually harassing you, it feels completely overwhelming. So I, I do think, I, I think I, it's irresponsible to say this person targeted harassment towards me 
but it's also I think there's a lack of empathy to how terrifying it can be to get so much of that hostile attention when you're a random no you know so if I, you're not I used am, to getting death threats I am sympathetic and then, I am sympathetic mm -hmm. to that the issue was like she took it to a point where I I feel like I can't take it seriously anymore without some kind of substantiation she made a point about how she was like borderline suicidal from the harassment. She made a bunch of mm. points to this effect. Now, yeah. there's there's a limit to this. If she said, you know, after the Vosh discussion, I've received a lot of negativity. I'm not going to disagree with that. You know, like, OK, mm. like, all right, I can believe that. Mm. But if you're going to go so as far to spend months talking about how my community has been racist, she said she'd been called the N word more in the past month than she had in her entire life beforehand or something like that. She was talking about how like miserable it made her past a point. I need to exert like I, uh, there's a level of discretion I'm willing to offer. And keep in mind, we're talking about a person who I know is dishonest. Like we're I'm, uh, we're talking about a person uh. that I'm inclined to already think is a piece of shit. So, <laughs> you know, adding to the like the grand list of crimes here being genocidal, um, lying for internet clout is definitely not that far off. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> despite extensive efforts from my like mod team, no evidence was found of any real, like, I'm sure she got some mean emails. I fully believe this. It'd be ridiculous if she didn't like just numbers wise, the size of my community. But yeah, that is not like past a point. Some degree of substantiation is necessary, you know? Yeah, no, I agree with you. I, I genuinely think that um, when smaller creators talk about harassment, um, they I, I think it's very loaded, obviously, for big creators, because they are if they are being accused of like sending their audience. But also, I think you can absolutely recognize that like you don't need to send your audience like if people vehemently disagreed with me during this conversation someone is going to feel like they want to tell me that or like come up in my chat and that doesn't mean it's harassment and that doesn't mean it's your fault but i do have a lot of empathy to how it might feel like harassment when it's just about you know it's like a bunch of individuals doing something and you're not used to it you're not aware of it and then you're like it absolutely i think the experience can absolutely be of like harassment the issue is that when you're accusing someone of like harassment then it kind of like puts them in a culpability position which is not necessarily fair but i i can see why people um conflate these terms because it, it can feel so so bad you know um, yeah just like yeah. again I've received more racism in the past month than I have for my entire life beforehand. Like, this has driven me to be suicidal. Like, past the point, obviously, I can't keep doing the whole, like, oh, well, this is just the natural course of, oh, how unfortunate. Because, you know, what are you to do in such a position if it feels like somebody is lying about the harassment they're receiving, despite well, multiple efforts to Well, I guess if you feel like they're lying. Well, we already know she's a liar. Even if she wasn't known <laughs> to be dishonest, I would be kind of skeptical. Okay, let me ask skeptical. you something. Let me ask you something. Would it have not been, even if you think you're lying, more optically advantageous for you to be like, if you are experiencing harassment from my community, I am ordering my community to stop. I'm so sorry you're experiencing these things. I vehemently disagree with all your positions still, but that doesn't mean you should be like receiving hate. Did. Wouldn't that, that just like... Nope. Publicly said multiple times, don't contribute to any harassment against her. Also had multiple members of my mod team reach out with um, promises to permanently ban people from my community if they were found. So you just got tired of repeating it, is your point? Well, past a point, it makes you wonder if anything's really happening, you know? <laughs> what, what, so I'm supposed to spend the rest of my life going like, okay, well, you know, I, I'm sorry, I just get off reading um, Professor Flowers' like 50-page manifesto on how like death squads were sent to her house who all wore like VGG merch. And then I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm, Sorry about that. I'm going to issue another warning to my community to not harass you. Okay, sorry about that. Like, okay, obviously, okay. past so the I'm point. I'm asking you to be a cuck and you're not willing to be a cuck is what you're saying. Fundamentally, yes. Okay, I mean, I can't, I, that's just like, I, I can't follow you for that, you know? If you don't want to be a cuck, like, cucks are great. Uh, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. But if you don't want to be a cuck, that's fine. Yeah, I mean... You know, should should be yeah. consensual if you're going to be a cuck, right? I would assume. <laughs> Usually I'm pretty pro-consent. That's how that works. Okay. Well, I did not consent in that uh, situation to being a cuck. So I'm not going to promulgate that narrative to my community or give them the you're impression. You're no fun. Just consent. I'm coercing you to consent. 
I'm not going to consent to being a cuck on this. I'm a cuck. And I'm already a part of the online left. I'm the part of the most cucked, like, political wing of American You say right that now. as you shoot inside your own tank and whine about how you hate your people. PF is not in my tank. I'm now genocider. And um, also, oh frankly, I, I don't think the people who like Professor Flowers are much in my tank either. Um, there's a pretty huge gap, I think, between people who are actually on the left and people who are synthetically or optically on the left. There are lots of things that may appear progressive that actually aren't. A good example for uh, would be um, uh, black separatist types on Twitter. Um, I saw this. I saw this recently. So there are two TikTok entertainers. One of them skinny. One of them is very muscular. They're both black, and basically they do minstrelry of themselves. Like they're two black guys, and they'll do the whole shuck and jive, watermelon, fried chicken thing. And you know, uh, it's a free country, but they have angered a lot of black people. They have a lot of choice words for those two individuals. Um, and I was seeing a big thread where black people were um, were not happy with this behavior, which understandable. It's basically menstruary. Just you're doing it as a black person. Um, and then I look in the thread a little bit, and I notice that all of these people who are like very like anti-black oppression, they're very like, hey man, like how the fuck is this going to help us with like liberation movements, blah, 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 blah. And then you look a little bit further, and a lot of them are, like, incredibly fucking homophobic. A lot of them are, like, incredibly transphobic. I see a lot of, like, and then I start to see people defend Kanye. And I see people start saying, well, Kanye is actually, like, an uncucked brother, you know? Even though he's openly said he sides with white supremacists. And they started talking about how he actually hasn't said anything anti-Semitic. And it's like, ah, interesting. From the... Flash. from From the outside, this thread might look like it's progressive. They're criticizing a racist... Uh, bit of behavior. In Ian, reality, these people are fucking Ian, psychos. Ian, mm -hmm. Ian, Ian, mm -hmm. I have to pee. I'm so sorry. Well, the sentence was done right there, or series of sentences, so you're free to go. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so sorry to anyone in the audience who wanted this stream to contain literally anything but this conversation. Um, we were having this conversation. I'm enjoying it. I'm here. Start this at the 12 minute mark. Um, okay. What's I'm not going to answer the question because you yeah. literally are proving my point. So there are a lot of people who are saying that I'm genocidal and I just want to clear up what I mean. What I mean to say is that there is no amount of violence. Oh, we've seen, we've seen this. We've seen this clip recently. Yeah. The one where she, she, she does the whole freak out like, haha. Good thing we're not genocidal. Here, if I open up the transcript and I search for um, colon, colonizer. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, as I was saying, uh, you know, sometimes people can appear to be on the left or to be progressive um, and uh, and they're not. I agree. Um, something I want to tell you, because I think it's funny, because other than that, and like me being disappointed in your um, gun takes, I think I'm done. Um, <laughs> um, so there was a time, I don't remember when it was, that you said on stream that, um, that your name is Vosh, and I thought that was serious. Um, so I thought your actual name was Vosh for like one and a half years. It's not the worst name, you know. I, I think it. I think it sounds <laughs> no, a little. I liked cool. it. I thought it was funny. Yeah. Well. Um, yeah. Apart from the gun takes, though, it's a pretty interesting intersection to be apparently like radically anti-Israel, but to be liberal on gun takes. I'm liberal on gun takes. What the fuck? Are you more pro-gun than I am? I am anti-gun. Yeah, that would be liberal on gun takes. Oh, sorry, not liberal in the sense that you're liberal about their use. Liberal in the sense that you would align with American liberals on anti-gun legislation. No, I'm way to the left of like. Well, I guess you would claim that some leftist anarchists are pro-gun. I would. Blah, blah, I would say the left. Like... The leftist position is to be pro-gun, and that it's a liberal position to be anti-gun. Okay. Well, my progressive position is that guns are dumb, and I think it's. Considering how 
you've literally stated that you agree and have looked at the research and there is more harm in having guns in the general population for you to be willing to sacrifice that for um the leftist con the leftist context and i, I would sacrifice the, anything for the leftist context well i i believe that your explanation to why you ended up kind of having the position that you do is because you think it is um unvi not viable to um like confiscate the guns from the general population right well there's like 400 million guns in america any practical effort to disarm the population would not be successful What's more, the population that I want disarmed isn't just random people, it's far-right militias who would literally rather die than give up their guns. So no, the guns are here to stay. But as long as these guns are already here, I would rather them um, be in our hands and not theirs. Well, then just a quick clarification. Would it then be fair to say that you are anti-gun on a moral level, but like pro-gun on a pragmatist level, kind of like how you are pro one state, but you don't think it's a legitimate like IRL solution. So you are actually for two states. Um, it depends on the circumstances. And both of my conditions here are pragmatic. Morally, um, my belief that people owning guns is good or bad is going to be determined by the outcome. So it's really all about pragmatism at the end. I don't think that people in like the UK, like lefties in England, I don't think they should be like fighting for laxer gun laws. I don't think there's any purpose to that whatsoever. I think it would be completely um, meaningless to do that. But in America where gun ownership is already near ubiquitous, um, I'm fully in favor of making sure that the right people have them. Okay. Um, I assume you don't have anything to say to me since I came to shit on you. Well, I'm not as um, familiar with your prescriptions, so probably not, but it's, I'd say no. it's been a pretty robust conversation. Yeah, I really appreciate the the time and the space. I'm I'm really happy. I, I feel like it was productive, even if you might not. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Do you want to shout awesome. yourself out? Yeah, I think I did the beginning. Um, I'm on Twitch. It's um, Dad Katie D A T K A T E E. It's always hard for me to spell that out because I'm an ESL, so <laughs> that's a bit uh, difficult. So I. I think I got it right. And uh, yeah, um, thank you so much. I enjoyed it. Yeah, have a wonderful day. I did as well. You thank too. You. Uh, I will absolutely DM you the bullshit about Professor Flowers. Feel free. Thank you. All right. Didn't expect that to go on for so long, but you know, that's the nature of conversations and live streaming. Uh, wow. Oh, boy. Okay. Oh, man. How are you liking Returnal? I only just started in, like, the jungle area. It's a lot harder than I expected. Oh, boy. Okay. How's PF still relevant? Watch from 1730. What is this? From 1730? Okay. Entertaining. What exactly is genocide? During the debate, I was genuinely unsure if removing colonizers is genocide. What I understood about genocide is that it can be tricky to determine. Much of my understanding of it came from the Rohingya genocide, where their oppression wasn't considered genocide by the UN until 2017. So is removing colonizers genocide? I really wasn't sure. I should have just said, I'm not sure what the definitions of genocide are, pause to look it up, and discuss it from there, instead of me responding with, I'm not sure, or I think that's okay, as any sense of uncertainty was seen as evidence of me being pro-genocide, and someone who was all too close to white nationalism but naively couldn't see it. So after the debate, I looked up if violent decolonization is considered genocide. I didn't find a clear answer on that, but what I did find on the legal definition was this. Genocide is A, killing members of the group. See, she's literally defending violent decolonization, but again, in South Africa, there aren't any colonizers. It's not a colony. There's, there's not... A South Africa isn't a colony. There are no colonizers. Group B, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of the group. C, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part. D, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. E, forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. For the legal definition, the intent is a deciding factor, and there must be a proven intent on the part of perpetrators to physically destroy a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group. Cultural destruction does not suffice, 
nor does it intention to simply disperse a group. Also, the victims of genocide must be deliberately targeted, not randomly, because of their real or perceived membership of one of the four groups protested under the convention, which again are national, ethnic, racial, and religious groups. After reading this, something that struck me as really frustrating was that the gotcha moment where my views were compared to genocide didn't constitute as a legal definition of genocide, which Vosh specifically references. As I've said, there are non-violent ways that you can remove colonizers from your country, and simply removing them isn't genocide, though depending on how, how it happens, it certainly could be. It's not something that I wanna focus on too much because at the end of the day, I'm not advocating for the removal of white South Africans. And I don't think that black South Africans Well, for me, it's like, uh, the way that I use the term colonizer is about uh, is about like the white people who are directly benefiting from a colonialist system. And that's how I throw that word around. And if you don't understand it as that, that's fine. It's not like a, no. a hill I'm willing to die on. You sure. know? It's not like it's not like an There's no longer a colonial system in South Africa. By benefit from colonial system, what she means is benefits from white privilege, which would be all white people academic term that I'm trying to use. I think it's just kind of like a, a short end way of me being like, yeah, white people benefit from colonialism. White people are still very- See, what, see she's literally just saying broadly white people. Much a, a colonialist problem and colonization never stopped happening. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I don't think most people would disagree that, uh, you know, that, that white supremacy, that white people benefit from white supremacy. Um, but to then say like, oh no, you're, therefore that makes you a colonizer, even though you could be descendants, uh, generations and generations and generations later. Like I, what am I supposed to do? I'm just trying to do my best. I just go to work, pay my bills. Uh, I'm looking for healthcare just like you. Like I'm nice. I'm, like, I'm respect what you could do is just like be against white supremacy. Yeah, of you course. Could be against I, racism. You could be against colonialism. But and then, but, you know, we're all good. But I think Vosh is against white supremacy. Okay. You don't Thanks, think so? Interesting. Um, after the debate that we had, no. Really? I mean, after so much, like, literally, like, every black person that Vosh has disagreed with, he literally painted uh, St. Andrew as, like, wanting to start a race war because St. Andrew was like, y'all need to deal with your own white supremacy before coming into black spaces. And he accused him of starting a race war. You know, Vosh had this debate on black... He was literally, St. Andrew was literally saying, um, white people and black people should not socially coexist until white people have somehow eradicated all white supremacy from within their own racial group. It's essentially like an advocacy for racial separatism. Was this in a debate? I don't know if that ever even got posted. Doc, man, I, I, man, it's so crazy. I think that people... It's so crazy how much, like, I still had the ponytail back then. It's like almost two years ago now, I think. Um, this go is so. They're an autonomy. So right this now. is so this is where I, I'm hate listening to my own voice, even though I know it's fine. Starting to wonder if you're educated enough to have this conversation. You <laughs> keep in mind we're an hour in, so it's not like stuff hasn't happened. Okay. Keep talking about colonization, wow. the socioeconomic phenomenon, and relating it to the actual lives of the millions of people in that country. Those aren't the same things. The sociological but the issue phenomenon is like of crime literally power is not the same in as the, the hands people in this country. Of the people can, how can you remove millions from a country? That was like right off the bat. Take out the people and colonize them. There's a number of ways that could look like in a way to take power from their oppressors, even if it's not full on separatism, is they take the power back that's taken away from them. And then that's how they kick out the people and colonize them. There's a number of ways that could look like without actually committing genocide. Doesn't that, I mean, how do you kick out millions of people because of their race without it being you a genocide? Take out so like when colonization happens, the people who call- I literally ask, how do you remove millions of people because of their race? And she engages with it. She doesn't say, hold on, I don't mean by their race. I mean like a specific group of political operatives who maintain a colonized system. Colonize those places, take over industries, making it so that way the people who have the most power are running those countries. So what you do to take away their power is you take the power back. You make those industries uh, not run by the people who are colonized them. And then because they have a lack of power- Not run by white people. Or those people tend to leave. That's just like one example off the top of my head. Oh, sure, sure. If you mean like reappropriating businesses and fairly distributing them and then people of their own volition leave, that's fine. But that's not what I tend to see from like black separatists, right? They aren't like, we should have a proportional amount of industry controlled by black people in X country 
and then let the cards fall where they may. There's usually an explicit intent to not live with the racial groups that are associated with their oppression, which is kind of what you use in your video too, right? Like you don't say uh, people in colonized countries should have the right to reappropriate industry and make it democratic. You say they should have a right to determine whether they want to live with their oppressor. You're giving the state the power to deport people or kill them when that's the language you use. My point is, is that the people who colonize those people, if the people who are there and they live in their own country don't want to live with people who are colonized, they should have the right to determine if they want to live with those people or not. I think that could look like a number of things. And my point is, is that it doesn't actually have to always look like genocide. And the way that you're painting it is, is just comparing it to white nationalism. And so my point is that you can critique these things. You don't have to agree with these things, but you can talk about that sentiment without calling it the same thing as white nationalism. But I talk that's my point of the two videos. But I've talked to white nationalists and they kind of talk exactly like how you talk. Most of them aren't bold enough to say, yeah, I want to genocide or deport all the non-white people. Usually it's like, yeah, we want to restrict immigration from X countries and we want to pay people to leave and we want to incentivize white power in our country. Because at the end of the day, I mean, it seems like the underlying logic here is the same, right? Whether the grievances are legitimate or not, and I want to make a clear distinction here, black people in South Africa have been oppressed by white people. White people in America are not oppressed by Jews or whatever. So obviously in terms of correctly identifying past modes of oppression, there's a huge difference. But the feelings of persecution are the same. Nazis do feel persecuted. And as a product of that, the language they use comes out really similar to this. We should have the right to determine a space for our people, a right to choose our homeland. So the language to me comes off really, really similar to uh, white nationalist stuff, especially when we're dealing in like really ambiguous terms like they should have a right to live free of the oppressors. I mean, how can a person be an oppressor because of their race? Did all the millions of white people in South Africa like individually oppress all the black people there? It just seems weird to be retaliatory in that way. So... It's not that every single person is necessarily an oppressor. The thing that people are talking about with racism comes down to the system that people are part of. For example, I'm adopted. Dude, literally, I'm, I'm so right all the time. Every time, it's, first of all, my points are excellent. Second of all, she's literally like, hey, it's not like it's, well, they all, all the white people benefit from the system, you know? Like, I, I'm, oh my God. And my dad is white. And he's a European immigrant, actually. And uh, he might not have been a part of the people who have enslaved black people or descendants of those people, but he's still profiting off of a racist system. And she's, she's using her white dad as an example of how it would be okay to deport white people from South Africa based on their race, because, oh my God. And there needs to be some sort of disempowerment of those people uh, as far as- of the, So by of those people, she explicitly means white people. That's what she's saying. Power and racist structures. Um, in order for there to be equality. So that's the point that I'm getting at. And the reason why I'm being vague is because if you look at different countries who have decolonized themselves, you have like all these different ways that those countries have gone about it. You have people who have been very violent and you have people who have somehow done it peacefully. Um, that we're reading a book called Ujima called, um, or it's called Ujima, but it's by Julius Nyerere, who was um, one of the leaders of getting rid of colonialism in Tanzania. Unfortunately, after he died, a lot of things were put in place, but he did it completely through voting, which is amazing. And we're also reading like Franz Manon's Wretched of the Earth. Franz Manon uh, did a lot of work in Algeria, which I, um, and those, there was like a lot of violence that happened there. Um, I think like dealing with colonialism is going to be messy and there needs to be room uh, to have nuance in these conversations. And I think just kind of reducing it to like, oh, this is white nationalism is very reductive. And it doesn't really give space for those people to talk about what to do. I just don't understand how you could ever morally permit any plan of action which involves the deportation of a people based on their ethnic group, you know? I don't know if that necessarily addresses any of that. That ethnic group colonized a group of people. Dude, okay, how can it be more explicit than that? I literally say, how can you justify deporting somebody based on their ethnic group? And she's like, well, that ethnic group did the crime. I, I, have no, I don't know how you could possibly... The, like, the thing that frustrates me is that sometimes when I look back in this debate, I know there's like a couple of examples I can think of of her doing everything I've always said she did, but I actually know that if I rewatch this full debate, which I never have, if I rewatch this full debate, I would find like 5,000 examples of her doing it. It wasn't subtle. There aren't like a couple of slip-ups that she did where, where like maybe you misinterpret where She was completely, explicitly, unambiguously, with no room for doubt, um, the things that I say about her, you know? I, yeah, I feel like there's been a coordinated gaslighting campaign. You told Noah Sampson you rewatch it like six times. Um, if I do, I don't think it's long enough ago that I don't fucking remember. I don't know. Maybe I did right after? It's been a while since I've watched it at least. Um, yeah. Yeah, like, I, I forget how bad it is on rewatch, you know? 
Oh, sure. But that's how. That's, yeah. that's, and we're, if we disagree well, on that line, that's no, fine. No, but I think I, colonized people have to have the right to self-determination. What to do about the people who colonized no, them? I, no, I, I agree that the ethnic group did indeed participate in the colonization, but I don't believe in taking blanket retribution against people for their bloodline because they're associated with the it's bloodline. It's not about... Well, it, it, yeah, it is. it is. It's about being away from the people who oppressed you. It's about taking your power back from the people who oppressed you. Yeah, that's but what I'm you saying. can do that, that context, without deportation. That context through the lens where you analyze that. I'm you, sure some people think so. And I'm sure some people have found that they can't. You know what I'm saying? It's you very can do different that for without, each country and each context. You can do that without deportation or creating an ethnostate. In fact, I can't really think of a single time in history that ethnic- It's so fucking crazy that people treat this like it was me forcing her to say this. Like, so many times I've heard people say like, oh yeah, basically she just like stumbled and Vosh like bullied her and kept asking over and over and over again. Like, she didn't really say that. He just kept trying to like force a conclusion and like twist her words. And she's like openly like fucking seek heiling over here. Um, this empowerment was improved through the initiation of genocide. Um, or, or, or like mass deportation. It doesn't seem to be a very effective way of changing the socioeconomic reality of the people who were previously colonized or previously oppressed. It seems like, if anything, it's an act of retribution. That people would go, oh, well, since we were the oppressed for centuries, now we have the right to enact moral vengeance against you and remove millions of you from the country or something. And that just seems to me, I mean, not only are you basically being the villain there, it just seems to me like this is a really impractical way of fixing any of these issues, you know? Like, what's, like, I don't- I mean, I think that's fair to say, hmm. like, that you could say, like, wow, like, mass deporting, millions of people is like not really useful or helpful um but i also think like when you look at people who are working on decolonizing like that's not necessarily what's happening people are just trying to like get the people who have power over them to leave and i think in that context that makes sense insofar as you're trying to break down a power structure that's where i stand on it personally if they want to leave that's fine but i don't think any ethnic group has any more of a right to a country than any other ethnic group um i don't think any racial group here in america has the right to decide whether they want to live with any other racial group. So like, just to like be clear, because I actually don't know your views on this, like you don't think that we should give the land back to indigenous people. If that involved deporting the people who live here who aren't indigenous, then God, no, absolutely not. I don't think we could fix one genocide with another one. I think there are ways to address the problems with like Native American people here today involving like land redistribution or like um, forms of reparation and stuff. But if it involves like displacing like millions of Americans, that seems, uh, I don't know, that seems pretty bad. I feel like I was really on point in this conversation, man. I mean, I think it sounds pretty bad. I don't think indigenous people are trying to do that. And at the same no, time- Notice how she keeps doing this, by the way, where she'll she'll defend ethnic cleansing. And then I'll be like, okay, but I think ethnic cleansing is bad. And she'll be like, well, I don't think land back activists are trying to do that, which I agree. Real land back activists don't in fact want to do genocide. To fear monger that they do is a kind of white supremacy. Professor Flowers does want to actually do that. She's not a land back activist. I agree. Like, yeah. These are the people who are these are the people who are colonized, and they have to have their own autonomy to decide what happens after being colonized by people. Well, and again, I don't limits, think that's right? the solution for them. Well, within limits, I, think I mean, they, they couldn't go like to decide those to limits. Well, wait. If Native Americans yeah. wanted to start like taking out a blood debt on white people, I don't think they should be allowed to just start killing us, right? I mean, I don't think they should be allowed to start killing people. What I'm saying is like they should have the right to decide if uh if the colonization should continue if the people who should should stay here or not what do you mean but where's here the whole of america do we deport a third of a billion people back to europe or something i mean we caused like a worldwide catastrophe to so that what a few million people can reinherit the land I, I like the logistics of this seem really odd to me shouldn't we talk about ways that you can pragmatically address these issues and not like just give massive moral leeway to people just because they're oppressed. I don't think being oppressed means that you have any more- I, sh I shouldn't have kept talking here. This was a big mistake for me. I should have just said, so you think Native Americans should be able to deport a third of a billion people back to Europe. I should- my problem here is that I'm still treating her as a good faith actor, so I'm, I'm talking on and on, but like, I, I should have just said that, like, flatly, you know? Right. To, um, to, to be like a moral judge, jury, and executioner than any other member of any other group. I think the point is, is that it's not actually like the U.S.'s land. We're on indigenous land and they need to have their own autonomy. She's still defending it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I've made my point. I, we, we just watched, um, we just watched, I think, nine minutes of this convo. And she said, I think we should be able to ethnically cleanse white people from non-European countries like 18 times explicitly with no room for misinterpretation. I, 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 yeah, like, it's like over and over consistently with no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, so, okay, I feel like my, I feel like my point has been made there. Uh, okay. 
I've always thought you should have gone harder in that debate. Yeah, well, that was back when I thought, like, I wouldn't end up being despised by the entire online left. So, you know, I, I it, there was more, like, hope back then. Um, we're in the bad timeline, where everyone doesn't agree with me all the time, at all the, you know, at all times.